Did I do this right? It's been... Hi! I'm here. I'm finally back. After two months of my last episode um, upload. Sorry I've been gone for so long. I had personal projects. And yeah, life was busy and I couldn't focus on streaming and playing games at the same time. But I'm here now. I need to finish this game so I can start playing... Um, AI, Sonium Files, Nirvana when it comes out next month. And I still have to finish Dragon Quest and Persona 5 Strikers. But we'll get to that, we'll get to that once I finish this, so... Let's go! Who is this stranger? I know, who am I? <laughs> hey Regal, long time no see, hope you've been well! The Great Departed Soul. Grand end of the century, Great Exhibition of London. Surely there's not a soul who has failed to hear of it. Wondrous new works of culture and industry from every corner of the globe has converged on Hyde Park. Welcoming over 50 million visitors, the last great hurrah of this century. Maybe the video, maybe the game audio is a little too loud. Let's lower it a tiny bit. Astonished and delighted people of all nations and ended on a note of resounding success. As regards to the terrible catastrophe that occurred during the festivities... Murder! Very few are aware of my friend Mr. Sherlock Holmes had a hand in unraveling the matter. Or from the shadows, it was he who earnestly unearthed the facts of the case. And like the centerpiece of the Great Exhibition which rose high into the skies of Hyde Park, Holmes' brilliant deductions, as clear and lofty as the Crystal Tower itself, brought the truth to light. There was no Crystal Tower, it was a Crystal Palace, but they can't, they can't use Crystal Palace. Oh wait, okay, I'm gonna move this screen down to this screen so I can read chat easier. We're here at the showground of the Great Exhibition which is absolutely packed with people. Wait, these are British people, I need an accent. Um, How you been? Did you get, finally get a BF? Did you start an OF? What? Oh, I did not get a BF. Um, I was just working on drawing stuff, art stuff. I did not start an OnlyFans. I barely have time to manage my social media and my stream. You th really think I could start something else? No. Did you die? No. <laughs> Thank goodness I did not. <laughs> But let's go! The weather is unusually fine, and we're about to witness a most extraordinary scientific experiment. Oh, whoa! Ladies and gentlemen, the 20th century will see steam engines and electrical power dominate the world. Guess what I just got today? A puppy? Introducing from the makers of Phantom Thief Curry, Phantom Thief Mouthwash, the plaque will never see it coming. Give those germs their last surprise. Available at your local Judas. Every day is great at you fetish it. Hey Alex, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Long time no see. I hope you've been well. I can't believe they made mouthwash. Like I find like I think Japanese companies are um like making a lot of household item stuff now. Like I saw like not deodorant, but um like mists to keep you hydrated and what else there was something that was also yeah i saw demon slayer um eyeliner it's just normal eyeliner colors it's just packaged in demon slayer patterns it was cute i kind of wanted to get it but i was like i haven't used eyeliner in three years you got puppy puppies a month ago <gasps> then what did you get today a ps5 have been things. Things have been good. Uh, they've been busy because I've been working on some personal art projects, but they are done now. So I can get back to streaming! I really missed playing games. I've just been playing, um, catching up on Animal Crossing, New Horizons, and uh, playing some visual novel Ultimate games. Yeah. <laughs> working on your own art museum? Yes, I am going to be my own blathers. <laughs> Four strong carts will give way to the motor car. Ships will sprout wings and take to skies. And today we showcase even more advanced technology. A glimpse into the future. A world first. A demonstration of my super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine. Is he supposed to be like Tesla? And then he's gonna die? 
Uh, sent you a photo of their Twitter of the puppies. <gasps> Time to check! A man will literally be disassembled by a pulse of high voltage electricity and beamed to another location. Yeah, he's Tesla. Whereupon his body will be reassembled by a series of complex calculations exactly as it was before. Oh my god, you're such tiny babies! What the heck? What is that? Is that a new mount? I am all cut up on uh, Final Fantasy um, 14 uh, MSQ. You finally got all 312 triad cards for the triad card mount? That's cool! Congratulations, dude! Your LA Kings actually made it to the playoffs. I didn't expect that. It got kicked in round one, but still they made it. Hmm, maybe it's time to finally watch a hockey game. I've always wanted to watch a hockey game. In but a few moments from now, this gentleman will, in the blink of an eye, complete an incredible journey through the air. To arrive an instant later on the crystal tower behind you. <laughs> Regal, you think I need a Klefki? Why? 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 <laughs> it's just a set of keys. No one needs a Pokemon that's a set of keys. Uh, I will not explain why. Why? <laughs> Bruno, Bruno, are you listening? Oh, sorry, um, what was that, Iris? Hmm, what's the matter with you? You've been miles away all morning. I never got a good handle on her British accent, huh? Game 1 of Western Finals just ended, Avalanche 8, Oiler 6, there's gonna be a lot of scoring in the series. Dang! I can't 8 to 6? That's crazy! Didn't you like what I cooked for breakfast? No, no, that's not it at all. Um, what were we talking about again? Today's paper! It's full of news about the Great Exhibition again! Ah, yes, the Great Exhibition. I'd like to go sometime. You're really not your usual self today. You seem very down. Don't you agree, Hurley? Game 1 of Flames vs. Oilers series was 9 to 6? The Oilers don't believe in goalies? Oh my gosh. Oh my... Yeah, don't believe in goalies if you have great offense, but you're letting them score that much on you? Like, what? <laughs> Sent you a couple more puppy photos? Gotta look! Mm, did you say something, Iris? Oh gosh, you're even more down! Oh, I forgot I put him in his Japanese outfit. Ugh! When did you arrive, Mr. Nodhoro? I've been here for about half an hour already. We had breakfast together. What? Why didn't you mention it before? I, um, thought you might have known I was here. You know, because breakfast? Hmm. Iris is quite right. You're clearly lacking in vim. So much so that I didn't notice your presence. Thanks. Of course, I could deduce the per reason perfectly well with some simple observations. <gasps> look at these boobers. Oh, they're so tiny. Oh, look at them. Babies. Oh, so cute. What? Vampire Smooth, how you doing? Long time no see, I hope you've been well. Let's see. Yes, for example, your tussled hair this morning with all its unruly spikes. Clearly it can be deduced, therefore, that... Uh, let me stop you there, Mr. Sholmes, because I think I can see where this is going. My hair always looks like this. It always has. Ever since we first met, in fact. Oh, really? How interesting. It just doesn't look like a haircut as such, I suppose. <laughs> Thanks again. It crossed my mind recently that it's been six months now. Six months? Since I was forbidden from working in court. So I've been wondering how much longer I'm going to be banned. Oh, well, that would explain why you seem rather glum. Don't you agree, Hurley? 
Why is he down? Hmm? Did you say something, Iris? Ah, back to moping. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'm finally here. I'm finally streaming. Sorry it took me so long to get back here. But how have you been, dude? What's the matter with Mr. Sholmes today? It seems even more down in the dumps than me. I know, and the great exhibition has opened. You'd think he'd be excited. Oh, why don't we all go see it together? I want to, of course I do, but I can't. Not for the time being. Why not? Why not? Why not? Because I'm a great detective after all. They're embroiled in some tricky case that you can't be distracted from, is that it? I don't remember hearing that you're working on a case, Hurley. I suppose I should try to find out what's going on. Let me talk. Converse. Event six months ago. Half a year ago now. I took on the defense of a young girl in a trial heard at the Old Bailey. What at first seemed like a simple case of murder that took place at a London pawnbrokery turned out to be one part of a much more far-reaching plot that involved the British government. During the course of the trial, it was found that I made an unavoidable, yet at the same time, unforgivable mistake. Actually, no, I'm gonna move this chat screen like so. Yes. Cool. This means Dad will be back with the milk too. <laughs> Why would you say that? No! Okay, first of all, like, where- how does everyone just understand, like, oh, dad's gonna go out to buy the milk, or dad's gonna, just gonna run to the store to buy cigarettes? How is that understood by everyone? That- that's a... I am walking out on you thing. That's- that's so sad. <laughs> well, it's fair, the situation is utterly deplorable, Mr. Nadahodo. Yes, my lord! I will decide upon your fate following the conclusion of this trial. Of course, my lord. What are these days? Someone's dad really did leave to go get milk and cigarettes, and he really did come back. <laughs> in the end, I had my right to represent people in court revoked. I was told I had to spend my time in research and studies, so that's what I've been doing. You have, haven't you, Rido? Reading all those big fat tomes about British law up in your room, and notes about Sholmes' old cases. Brewing Iris' special blends of tea, fetching my daily bread for me. Become something of a manservant around here, start on the Civil War next, Master Nodohodo. Katie <laughs> finally gonna play Danganronpa after she beats this game. That's also another reason why I wanted to get back to streaming. I've had Danganronpa sitting here forever, and I really want to play it. Because I'm just like... I need to find out, like, what's so great about it. I've seen tons of Danganronpa art popping up on my Twitter timeline for some odd reason. So yeah, I need to know why everyone's so crazy about it. Well, I'm thinking of going to ask the powers that be to reconsider. S specifically, Lord Strongheart at the British Supreme Court on Whitehall. Lord Strongheart? Ah, the delightful Lord Chief Justice. Not my favorite fellow. He's not mine either, but he's the man I have to talk to. He's the only one who can grant permission for me to start working in the courts again. I came to Britain to become the best- y We keep recapping. We can't recap. Uh, I'm gonna skip. <laughs> Sorry. It's like, at the start of every case, it's like, I came to Britain to be a lawyer. This is what happens. Ask Kana, she plays it a lot. What is she up to? Because I remember seeing that she was playing the first one. But since I don't want it spoiled for me, I haven't, like, dropped in. But is she on the third one? By now? Hopefully, maybe? The whole of London has been swept up in this great exhibition, hasn't it? The most advanced science, the most modern technology, the finest works of art, and feats of engineering. For the next six months, our capital will be showcasing these things. And the world will be watching. Uh, do you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to look down on London from one of those lovely balloons. Look down on? Do- do you mean those things? I? Yes, 
Yes, of course. They fly high in the sky and don't even need wings to do it. All you need is hot air. But how? How does hot air have anything to do with flying? It makes no sense. I can't understand it at all. That's true for a lot of new scientific discoveries. Most people can't understand them at first. But in a hundred years' time, all these things will just be common knowledge. I suppose they might be. Mind you, some of the science being demonstrated seems very questionable. Something went wrong with, on the open experimenta experimentation stage yesterday, apparently. There was a huge explosion. Still, I wish I'd seen it, though. I'd love to see how bad some of those scam experiments really are. Uh, some go to Britain for the theatre, some go for the pubs, some go for the soccer, I go for the old British heavy metal music. I want to visit uh, England, but I want to visit because I want to see all the big houses where they filmed um, Pride and Prejudice uh, and Downton Abbey. The only reason why I want to go. I forgot what game is this, it's been too long. This is Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, I'm on the second one. So this is the start of case 7, so including this one I have three more cases to go. I'm done with this game forever. British toast and some English muffin. Yeah, and like their food names are different. Like biscuits over there is not. Yeah, cookies over there are biscuits. But it's not like the cookies we eat. It's like softer, chewier. Weird. Not weird. Different. Fish and chips. <gasps> Fish and chips are so good. Mmm. Whenever I go to a, a bar, like pub, I always get fish and chips, and it's always so good. So nice and warm and crispy. <gasps> Does the innocent ten-year-old girl. See here, every page of this paper carries some article or other about the great exhibition. But the brighter things shine, the darker the shadows that are cast behind them. Personally, I find myself drawn to the darkness, to the impenetrable. That is my proper atmosphere. The Great Exhibition newspaper has been entered into the court record. Shadows cast behind? Is that a metaphorical way of referring to the back page of the paper? <gasps> Your gloomy mood. Are you investigating a particularly tricky case at the moment, Mr. Scholes? Hmm, you could say that, I suppose. Nothing more to add? That's not like you. What sort of case is it? Shh! Quiet, Mr. Naruhodo must not discuss it here. You never know who might be listening. You're acting very strangely, Hurley. What do you mean, Iris? Well, usually. The more mysterious and complicated the case is, the better Hurley's mood. Ah. <laughs> is it really a case that's bothering you? Iris, please, you mustn't exercise your astute powers of observation and deduction on me without invitation. Remember what I always say. Put yourself in the shoes of the individual about whom you're making deductions. You say that, do you? You, Mr. Scholes? Never mind. Once I've had a cup of tea, I must make my way at once to the crime scene. <sighs> that was a deep sigh. Also, we need to get you that Eureka mount. Oh, oh, Eureka. Ugh. Well, I'm all caught up on MSQ, so I've just been, like, farting around, um, trying to level up my NPCs so I could just keep running the last dungeon to uh, farm foam stones. But maybe I could work on getting mounts. Uh, okay, and you are- <gasps> You're saying I'm weird! <laughs> I am weird. Um, am I examining anything? I'm sorry, did someone say strikers? <gasps> did I say strikers? I said strikers before. Um, am I examining something special? Am I just looking at the court record? Every article on the front page is news about the Great Exhibition. Public experiments to demonstrate brand new scientific ideas, cultural exhibits from around the globe. It's also positive and hopeful about the coming century. We must all go to see it properly before too long. First matter of ten, ten pages, one penny. Ooh. So many glowing reports about the Great Exhibition and everything that's going on there. Other than this rather gloomy looking one, that is. Wait, 
What? What's the matter, Rina? The Reaper attacked. That's that's Lord Van Zeeks. This will be what Mr. Scholz is talking about. Does he know any more, I wonder? That is an interesting picture. That is a bird mask on. He can dish it, but he can't take it. I am just a squishy marshmallow. <laughs> I shall melt in the smallest a bit of moisture. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm tired. <laughs> it says in the paper that Lord Van Zeeks was attacked. That's terrible. You know the legend of the Reaper at the Bailey, of course, don't you? Only too well, in fact. Yes, Prosecutor Barrack Van Zeeks. Marshmallow Toast, that sounds like a real thing for our CMAP fires. Isn't there like a marshmallow type of spread that you can actually put on toast? I've never tried it, but I think I've seen it in jars. They say that if the Reaper is the prosecutor in the case, there's no salvation for whoever's on the dock. And if you get out, even if you're safe, you'll die anyway. Sorry, we just seen this so many times before, I'm skipping. London's finest rogues always finds ways around the law. They'll stop at nothing to secure an acquittal or trial. Falsifying evidence, paying sham witnesses, threatening jurors, bribing judges. But even such devious tactics as these cannot save them from the hand of the Reaper. As you've experienced yourself, haven't you, Mr. Nodhodo? Yes, I've seen the Reaper's retribution at work. Many of these criminal rogues are reckless and quite unafraid to die. If a leader among their fraternities is seen to have been taken by the Reaper, retaliation like this does occur. Really, the capital has a never-ending supply of such scoundrels. So, do you mean Lord Van Zeeks has been attacked like this before? This isn't the first time. He's quite an accomplished combatant, you know. He doesn't take these attacks lying down. Although, it seems that his assailants were armed with guns this time. Oh my goodness, is he alright then? Is Lord Van Zeeks hurt? My dear fellow, how on earth would I know? Well, in the article here it says, As to what of Lord Van Zeeks and his condition, all will be revealed in tomorrow's morning edition. Ah, I see. Well, we shall have to be patient then. No, 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 I can't wait until tomorrow. In that case, you shall have to inquire with somebody in the know. But who? Lord Strongheart, perhaps? Well, I must be leaving now. Yes, understood. See you later, Mr. Sholmes. Ha! You really are a shameless liar sometimes, my dear fellow. What? You seek to put me off my guard and follow me, don't you? Well, you would be wasting your time. Oh, it hadn't crossed my mind, but now I'm wondering where you're going. Ah ha 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 Well then, see you later indeed. Sholmes is still weird. Listen to him, he's still laughing on his way out of the door. What is Iris wearing? Alright then, Rina, let's get going. Oh, um, Iris, what are you wearing? I've got change to go to the Great Exhibition. You're going to take me. What? But, but I was just about to go to the Supreme Court. Oh, well, that sounds fun too. You're going to take me there then. Alright, fine. Just lower that weapon, would you? Of course. And after the Supreme Court, then we'll go to see the Great Exhibition. New location has been added. The Chief Justice Office. It's gross that birds are inside the office. Ew. It's been about six months now since I was last here. But some things never change. Like the sense of foreboding I always seem to feel in this place. <gasps> Iris is so cute! She's just lying on the ground. Doesn't seem to be bothering Iris at all, though. She's happily reading over there. She has a gun! <laughs> it's her smoke gun! Oh, I love this place. I always find so many interesting books here. Of course, I was forgetting that you've been here before. The time we came here six months ago. 
when Tsusato-san was given the news that she was to return to Japan. Ah, I, I understand you wish to speak with me. Oh, Lord Strongheart. I trust you've been keeping well. Let's see, since you arrived and requested an audience, it's been 4 hours, 32 minutes, and... 26 seconds. I've kept you waiting a while. My apol- We've been standing here for 4 hours? Oh no, not at all. I like nothing more than standing around staring into space. Good to know. Good to know that doesn't appear to bother him at all. Now, Strongheart, Lord Chief Justice of London. He's the man who allowed me to start practicing as a defense lawyer when I arrived in Britain as a student. You need only savor the air for a moment in this grand office to understand his preeminent status. He's gotta be a baddie. He has the air of a bad guy. As you will be aware, the Great Exhibition of London is now underway at last. We're extremely busy as a result. Policing the grounds, guarding the new technologies, dealing with the pet crime. And furthermore, as of next month, we shall open the International Forensic Science Symposium. Oh, I have not heard about that. Investigating authorities from 40 countries around the globe will be taking part, including from your own land. Forensic science is the future. The world must embrace it. As we're the hosting nation, I have much to do. And it is my highest priority. If others must wait for my attention as a result, so be it. Well, it's nice to know where I stand. Uh, there's this girl I think she was interested in me. It's awkward, though. Well, depending on where you meet and how you meet, it's always gonna feel awkward. But just, like, you know, like, keep talking with her. Keep, keep like, being present in her life without being too overbearing or creepy. But yeah, good luck. I hope it goes well. Standing around for four hours, that won't make the legs sore. Yo, I stand around for an hour and a half, and I get so tired. I hope, like, Yunosuke sat sometime. So, you wish to consult with me? Of course, I can very well imagine what this is about. Ah, well, um, thank you for agreeing to this meeting, my lord. I want to be allowed to start working as a defense lawyer again in court. That's what brought me here today. But actually, there's something else playing on my mind as it happens. You know, just take a deep breath and come out with it. Converse. Permission to work. I actually came here today to ask for your permission. Go on. Six months ago, my right to work in court as a lawyer was revoked and I was told to spend my time studying. Obviously, I'm very sorry for what happened, but the thing is, it made me understand what it really means to defend somebody under the rules of a foreign justice system. And I desperately want to have another go. Please, permit me to enter the courtroom again. Mr. Naruhodo. Yes? Ugh, here it comes. I'm sure you haven't forgotten your position here, have you? At best, you are a substitute for your compatriot. This was never your intended role. Well, that's true. The Japanese government actually sent my best friend on the study tour, not me. <laughs> it should have been Kazuma! <laughs> he was so determined to bring change to our own justice system at home. That was his calling. Kazuma! Asogi! <laughs> if that tragic accident hadn't had happened, I wouldn't be here in this office now. Mr. Asuki was my best friend, you see. That's why I can't leave it unfinished. I have to fill his calling for him. Hmm. His calling, you say? Has it never occurred to you? That perhaps you know nothing of his true calling. Sorry? The mission with which that young law student was charged. What do you suppose it really was? What do you mean? Mission? He's not making any sense. Never mind. I've read all the reports you've submitted over the past six months. It's clear to me that you regret your actions and have been studiously obeying your revised instruction. Do you mean... As of this moment, I reinstate your license to practice law here in Great Britain. 
Uh, she works at Patil. She stands outside taking orders sometimes. I don't think I want to visit her too often, otherwise she might think I'm a fatty or more like unhealthy eater. But Portillo's is sandwiches, isn't it? Sandwiches are healthy. Not even Sai Nijima could get Kazuma Kiryu out of this mess. I think she can. She's scary. She could do it, man. Oh, Portillo's is burgers? And what am I thinking of? Oh, I'm thinking of pot bellies. Whoops, sorry. I haven't had pot bellies in years. I wonder if they're still around. The last time I went, their sandwich size was a lot smaller than I remember it being, and I was just like, mm, they're ripping me out of my money. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's wonderful news, Reno. In fact, I believe I have the perfect case to mark your comeback. A curious affair. We'll consider it, I hope. Of course, please tell me more. Tell me more, tell me more. A uh, curious affair. I'm sure it's happened in fanfics, but Persona 5, Yakuza, and Phoenix Wright in a crossover needs to exist. Uh, that would be freaking awesome. Yes, please. Because don't they all take place in like modern Japan? So it can totally happen. You described it as a curious affair. Yes, that's right. I believe it was reported in the press. Are you aware that there was a serious accident at the Great Exhibition yesterday? Oh, no. Yes, I read about it. A professor from Germany tried to carry out a crazy experiment. Let me see, how was it described? Super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, I think. Instantaneous kinesis? As in, moving things with the click of the fingers? That's right. It's just what my herbal blends need. A dash of devil may care. Whatever the serious accident was exactly, it's clearly captured Iris's imagination. It's an unfortunate business. A large explosion engulfed the public experimentation stage and a man lost his life. A certain Mr. Odie Asman. Odious man. So, he was clearly a bad guy. An investor and a well-known figure in society. A large explosion. Uh, a man died. The man responsible for the experiment was Professor Albert Hairbrain. Ah, uh, hairbrained, haha. <laughs> he was detained immediately after the incident and is due to appear in court tomorrow. On the charge of murder. What? Murder? If you intend to take on his defense, you should hurry to meet with him at the prison. There is very little time left for you to carry out any kind of investigation. The Great Exhibition, scientific experiment gone wrong, and murder? I feel out of my depth before I even started. Still. We should go to the prison straight away then and try to meet with this German professor. Don't you think? Definitely. No, I still have to ask about the Forensic Science Symposium. Ah oh, yes, one more thing about the case. There's a connection with our mutual acquaintance, the Reaper. Oh. With Lord Van Zeeks? How? All sorts of conferences have been taking place around the world to coincide with the Great Exhibition. And next month, the largest and most important of them all will take place at last. The International Forensic Science Symposium. It does seem as though criminal investigation needs to embrace scientific methods, doesn't it? Exactly. Ah! London, the global epicenter of culture, science, and wealth. Really? Culture? Hmm. Now a population exceeding 6 million. Sadly, crime in the capital is growing at a similarly startling rate. It's imperative that we use the latest scientific methods to investigate and resolve cases as efficiently as possible. Which is what's known as forensic science, isn't it? Exactly. The future of policing. Ah! Regrettably, however, Britain is currently dragging its feet when it comes to the adoption of forensic methods. Oh dear, that's alarming. Exactly. It's extremely alarming. Ah! If I were Her Majesty's Attorney General, you could be sure. The numbers of crimes committed and resolved in London would be very different to the current figures. And I can cite 12 solid arguments and 223 individual reasons to support my claim. Sorry? 
By way of apology for keeping you waiting earlier, I shall detail everyone now. What? <laughs> oh, how fascinating. It all began 15 years ago. I was... I got, I got a prison to visit. Excuse me. I feel like he's trying to sabotage me. I think he's in on this, this murder. <clears throat> Maybe he's after Van Zeeks. And that more or less sums up my feelings on the matter. In the simplest of terms, of course. Essentially, to formally establish a forensic investigation division within Scotland Yard. That is my mission. Oh, um, right. Yes, that's wonderful. Exactly. Wonderful is precisely what it will be. <laughs> Iris isn't paying attention at all. She's got her nose in another book now. The awkward part was I went today to go give her my number, but she wasn't there. That's not awkward. She might have had a different shift today. Or called out sick. Or something. Don't give up. Oh, is it over? Did you learn anything useful? I actually drifted off for the most part. He's surprisingly ardent about forensic science. If he's ardent about forensic science, then I can't be like a bad guy. Hmm. Prison. Oh, I talked to another girl there, ask if she knows her. Uh -huh. <coughs> Warren said cell 11. That's this one. Oh, there's someone curled up in a bowl in the back corner. Look! What's his name again? Professor Albert Hairbrain, was it? Um, excuse me, Professor Hairbrain. I don't think I could do a good German accent. Who are you? I'm Juno Skenadohoro. I'm a defense lawyer. A lawyer! Ah, was it something I said? Uh, a lawyer, you say? Would you be here uh, uh, about the experiment? I don't know how to do German accent, I'm sorry. Are you going to defend my hypothesis? Your hypothesis? Sorry, I don't... Yesterday's demonstration! That demonstration was... That magnificent demonstration was... It was an out-and-out -out success by anyone's calculations! But despite that... No one listens! No lawyer believes in the science! When it's explained, they all leave at high velocity! Uh, described her. It wasn't very descriptive. She thinks she knows who I'm talking about. She was like, how old are you? I was like, uh, 20s. Oh no, is she gonna be like, a teen? Ah. Oh, that's awkward. Um, yeah, back, uh, back off, back off. Ooh. Dang. Close call, I guess. I'm sorry that happened. Shucks, that sucks. Now it's probably not a good time to mention that your zeal made my concentration leave for a while, too. Converse. Yesterday's demonstration. Um, you mentioned the demonstration yesterday. The papers have called it a spectacular failure. After all, the man died in the explosion, didn't he? Ah! Yes, you could interpret the results the way if you wanted to. Well, I, I suppose in the strictest sense. The experiment was a failure, but at the same time it was a great success. You've lost me. I saw it with my own eyes, right there in front of me. Mr. Asman was simultaneously dissembled. So then, everything was going exactly as my calculations had predicted. At that point he should have been beamed to the crystal tower by instantaneous kinesis. However... The machine exploded and Mr. Asman, in fact, perished. Yes, I can't deny that part of the experiment was a failure. So what you're really saying is, the large explosion that killed Mr. Asman was an accident, correct? But the Bigwigs had you as, uh, arrested on suspicion- ah, I can speak. On suspicion of murder. It was responsible for a man's death. That is the immutable truth here. And for that, I wish to be punished at once. Oh, but... Murder? Never in a million years. It, 
It was an accident, simply an accident. I see. Charlie and I were talking this morning, you know. He said the situation would change completely depending on whether it was treated as an accident or a murder. How exactly? Well, if it really was an accident, then the professor's machine would be kept in protective custody. On what grounds? Ah yes, it's newly established here in Britain, the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. That one passed me by. But if the case is treated as murder... <coughs> they'll say my machine was the murder weapon and they'll be able to pour over it as much as they like. If they examine it in detail, they'll find out how it's made and then... They'll be able to copy my idea. My precious hypothesis will be stolen. The machine must be protected from that at all costs. <coughs> That's why it's imperative this whole incident is shown to be an accident in tomorrow's trial. Ah, I see now. I bet that's why it blew up. Someone was like, oops, he did it for murder. And then they're gonna find out his secrets and then they're gonna steal his idea and try to sell it for money. So yeah, it's clear as day. Ah. But if I'm lucky, she's not talking about the girl that likes me. True, true, true. They could be similarly, similarly looking people. Like, yeah, she has brown skin, long black hair, and a mask. She could have been half the girls. Yeah, 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 yeah. True, 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 true. Well then, good luck again. <laughs> I hope... I hope this girl works out. Try at Jerry Lewis from Nutty Professor Germanish. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I did not make that connection, but now that you said it, I see it. <laughs> so in short, there was a terrible accident at the Great Exhibition Soga yesterday. Yes. Or rather, no. The devil is in the details. Strictly speaking, there was a terrible explosion. Sounds the same to me. You were demonstrating super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, weren't you? How oh, fascinating. Humans, like all matter, are made up of particles that are held together by electrical bonds. So it must be possible, using a sufficiently high voltage, to break those bonds and beam the particles to space. That's... that's it in a nutshell. That's my idea, you see. That's my amazing hypothesis! Gosh, that's unimaginably high-level science. Oh, but dare to imagine it. Dare to dream of such incredible technology. Just think, one moment I could be here in the cell, and the next, I could be at the Great Exhibition again. Well, yes, that would be incredible. And the next, in the near blink of an eye, I could be a great Parisian theatre, say. The possibilities are endless. The whole of our vast planet could be within reach. So, no more hiding in wardrobes on rocky seas for 50 days. <laughs> hmm, I don't really see it like that. What do you mean, Iris? Well, if you could travel anywhere in the world instantly... The planet wouldn't really seem vast anymore, would it? I think it would feel like it had shrunk. My word! That's... that's exactly right! What are the implications? What does this mean? Oops, that's got Professor Bunnybrain really worried by the look of it. Really, this is yet another case of just because you can doesn't mean you should, I suppose. The point is, my calculations are flawless. The science works. But without a practical demonstration, it means nothing. And that's always the fly in the ointment. Because practical demonstrations cost a lot of money. Money that young scientists like you don't have. That's, that's exactly it, yes. Charlie's always complaining about it. He says the government should invest more on science. Well, anyway, I bumped into him at the right time. I met the well-known investor, Mr. Rasman. The victim who died in yesterday's terrible accident, you mean? <coughs> Listen, if you see me in the news that I'm going to prison, just know that I'm innocent. The funniest part, though, was when I told my mom that the girl's 16, she was like, so... I mean, maybe like a hundred years ago, that would have been, you know, not so frowned upon. Not these days. Like these days? I feel like everyone's mentality and just stage in life is like pushed back 10 years. So like right now, like right now, say you're like 23. No, that doesn't work, that's too young. Say, for example, you're 28 and you're like, okay, I earn this much money, I live in this type of place, 
like, um, my career status is like this, whatever. But like, I feel like your stage at where you are as a 28 year old is how it should have been. Like that should have been your status like when you hit 20, 21 years old, like 10 years ago. So like right now I'm 35 and now like I'm earning like X amount of money. I'm living in like a bigger apartment. Like I feel like I should have reached this status stage in life when I was 27. So I feel like everything's like pushed back for us. So when older people are like, oh, you're like 28, but you still don't own a house. What the heck? It's like, yeah, because everything's pushed back and delayed for us. Does that make sense? So yeah, when, when your mom's like, she's 16, so she was born and raised in Mexico, came over when she was 16, the age of consent in Mexico, 16. Yeah, like in different countries, it's different. Because <clears throat> I believe in Japan also, you're legally allowed to get married at 16. But just because you can, doesn't mean you should. You know? Uh-oh, I got a warning. What? Stream disconnected? Why is it? No. I'm still going. Okay, whatever. Weird. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, you gotta follow. Oh no! Did it? Did it crash again? <gasps> oh, I was on a roll. Oh no, we're going. Okay, weird. Streamlabs is being weird. Hmm. Anyways, I'm gonna continue with the game. The full name of the man who died in yesterday's accident was Mr. Odie Asman, wasn't it? What exactly was your relationship with the man? He first visited me in my laboratory in Germany a year ago now. What you say because you cut out? Um... I don't remember what I said. I'm sorry. I think I, the last thing I said was just because you can get married when you're young doesn't mean you should. I think that's what I said. Hopefully, when I cut out. <laughs> said he wanted to invest in my immaculate hypothesis. I thanked my lucky stars. I see, so you hadn't really known each other until then. Money for scientific research. So envious. As far as I was concerned, the man was an angel. Oh, really? An archangel, even. I was prepared to fund a practical demonstration of my hypothesis for presentation at the Great Exhibition. And if that went well, I could expect additional financial support for my research from the British government. Mr. Asma provided me with money and an exceptional engineer. He produced the machine to my precise specifications. But then your dreams were blown to dust in one enormous explosion. As you can see, I owed everything to Mr. Asman. I would never, ever have thought of taking the man's life. Well, he seems genuine enough. I don't think he's lying. Oh, whoa. Oh, something about the... Uh, what's, what's up? Do you watch H Bomber Guy? No. Who's that? I just got into him. I have I've never heard. Wait, I can't converse anymore? What's my court record? Uh, who are the people? Uh, strong heart, odious, odious man, a well-known financier. Albert Harebrain is 33. Whoa. Am I supposed to move? No, wait, uh, should I present? Nope. Um... Okay, I guess I'm moving. But where? Sweet. Some say I'm robbing the cradle, I say she's robbing the grave. <laughs> oh! Oh my gosh, smooth! Dang! <laughs> wow, that was good. Okay, I guess I'm not supposed to be here. What to do? 
Looks like I've heard opening for business again. That's not what it's called. It's not Hodo's legal consultancy. I've done a lot of studying in these past six months, reading a lot of blah blah. We're a better lawyer now, start practicing. Nothing's changed out here at all, though. So, time is this. Susie went to back to Japan. I want to keep it ready for Miss Susato in case she was able to return to Britain at any point. So, I've just left everything the way it was. Oh, I see. Right. That was me thinking it's because of the way you are, Runo. No, I'm never bothering to tidy up. I mean, Iris. This isn't the type of place to bring up my tightness or the lack of it. That explained nothing about what I was supposed to do. Um. I'll try presenting the newspaper? Oops. No, present, present. If you like uh, watching long-term content of a guy analyzing game shows and world topics, you would like him. I do like it when people analyze games, but I guess I should see how he analyzes them? <clears throat> but yeah, send me, send me a link, and I'll, I'll look him up later. Ugh, oh, how could this have happened? He must feel awful. As well as man losing his life, the Crystal Tower was greatly damaged, too. I... I know what's happened. It must have been that! That? That day before the demonstration, I had my usual meal of frankfurters at the hostel restaurant. When I paid the bill, they gave me three shillings too much in change. But, instead of saying anything, I just slipped the coins into my pockets. They're still here there now! It's divine retribution for my wrongdoing. That's what this is. For a scientist, he has some very illogical anecdotes. Long and illogical. Okay. Hmm. Then did I miss something in Ronghart's office? Is that... Oh, that reminds me. Have you seen this? Reports of the overwhelming success of the Great Exhibition. Of course. No, no, not that. The story on the back- Oh, yeah, I had to ask about, uh, Van Zeeks. What story? Uh... He made a video on pathologic... Fallout New Vegas vaccines, climate change, and the one Sherlock show with Better to Cumberbatch. Sherlock? <laughs> I like Futurama. Futurama is great. One of my animation teachers was actually an um, uh, artist on Futurama <clears throat> back in the earlier seasons. It was awesome. The Reaper attacked. Ah, oh, that. You've enjoyed some victories in court against my number one prosecutor, have you not? Oh, Mr. Reaper. What happened to him? He, he wasn't killed, was he? There's no need for concern. Lord Van Zeeks would not be so easily dispatched, I assure you. Can you tell us what happened? I'd really love to know. Very well. If it interests you. It does, strangely. Okay, so now I can talk about that. He also made a video on why Ruby is so disappointing. I've never watched it. So... It seems interesting, but I just never started it. Fortunately, Lord Van Zeeks emerged from the attack unscathed. Street ruffians are no match for that man. He's a very capable fighter. But that's incredible. They were armed with guns. How was he attacked, though? Do we know? It's related to events that occurred a month ago. A leader of one of the capital's criminal organizations was indicted and prosecuted by Van Zeeks. But the man was acquitted. I have no doubt large sums of money were involved behind the scenes. Large sums of money? A deplorable situation. Members of the jury were bribed, it seems. However, despite winning his freedom, the man in question met a dramatic end yesterday. But you're not suggesting that was the work of the Reaper, surely? The victim's henchmen certainly seem to think so. There's a man by the name of Asman. Mr. Odie Asman. Did, did you say Asman? That's the man who died in the big explosion at the Great Exhibition. Yes, known publicly as an investor, but in reality, the head of a significant criminal organization. Unbelievable. I wonder, could I ask you something, Lord Strongheart? Try me. Why do you use Lord Van Zeeks as a prosecutor? All the criminals who manage to get off in court then meet with mysterious ends outside the courtroom. And fearful of that fate, they seek to strike at Lord Van Zeeks first. 
I know there's no evidence that he actually is a Reaper in that sense, but still. Something's clearly going on here. I have Van Zeke's work for the prosecution service for two reasons. Firstly, the man is the best prosecutor in the capital, bar none. And secondly, any deaths of criminals that have occurred outside the courtroom following his trials are nothing to do with him. That doesn't make sense. How can you explain the way so many have died if not by someone's hand? Van Zeeks may have earned himself the moniker of the Reaper, but he is no killer. So he will continue to prosecute on behalf of the Crown. Unless he wishes to otherwise, of course. Uh... By the way, in case you don't know who he is, he's the guy who said to Ben Shapiro, who are they going to sell their houses to Aquaman? That sounds very familiar. Oh my gosh. Well, I must be leaving for my next engagement. I'm already 11 hours and 16 minutes late. My colleagues may be starting to fidget. 11 hours late? That's quite something. That meeting had already started when I arrived back here for this engagement with you. So lateness was inevitable. Time stops for no man. I'm sure it stopped for me during those 12 solid arguments and 223 reasons. Oh, yes, where would I find Lord Van Zeeks now? I would assume he's at his office. Right, I'll go and ask him about the attack in person. I want to get this straight from the horse's mouth. Away with you now. I'm leaving Professor Hairbrain's defense entirely in your hands. Of, of course, yes. Thank you very much, my lord. Uh, New location! Whee! I'm not gonna stop until I reach the first save point. I'm doing this! I'm gonna finish this game! In a month. Oh, so this is the legendary Reaper's office. Yes, it appears so. Ugh, it sends a chill down your spine, doesn't it? What an amazingly deadly atmosphere. Oh, is that... Huh? That hooded figure was so still, I hadn't noticed his or her presence. I wonder who it is. What are you doing here? Ah! Oh, it was him. He's as unwelcoming as I thought he'd be. Actually, maybe even more so. Oh, I, um... I'm glad to see you're well. I am. So, who's the person over by the wall being punished for something or other? No punishment is taking place here. Oh. That's my apprentice, and he's sitting there of his own free will. I didn't know you had an apprentice. It must be the same person who was pictured in the newspaper. Why does your apprentice have a bird mask? He is very able in combat, a requisite skill for anyone under my tutelage. Are you referring to the attack on the Reaper that was reported in the papers? The Reaper? I'd be interested to know the Reaper's true identity myself. Assuming, that is, such a fabled fiend genuinely inhabits our great courtrooms. Haven't you called yourself the Reaper? What? This guy's so weird. Last night's attack. Lord Strongheart said that the assault last night was some sort of revenge attack. True. Carried out by henchmen of Odi Osman's criminal organization. The investigation meant their arrests were imminent. Presumably some hope to kill me before that happens. Odious man. Odious man. I can't stop saying odious man. He's always masqueraded as one of London's most powerful financiers, a global investor. But his enormous wealth came to him by underhand means, via his criminal activities. He used that money to buy himself a verdict of not guilty when he found himself in court, didn't he? Being prosecuted by you, Mr. Reaper. But the man got his cup comeuppance in the end. Yesterday, in fact, in extraordinary circumstances, it was a most unusual cause of death. I know about that. It was super high voltage instantaneous kinesis gone wrong. Mr. Asman died when the demonstration on the public experimentation stage ended in an enormous explosion. Correct. And you think I have some kind of divine ability to cause an accident like that to happen, do you? Well, no, that does seem a little far-fetched. 
If this man really is the fabled Reaper, then he has to be innocent of this particular death, at least. It's strange how this has worked out, isn't it, Runo? I mean, what with you taking on the Professor's defense for the trial tomorrow? What? You're going to be defending him? Oh, yes, that's right, though I barely know the man's name yet, to be honest. Albert. Albert Hairbrain. That's right. Do you know him by any chance? Of course. He's a contemporary of mine. We are at university together. Oh ho! Your what? You went to school? Next, yeah, you mean who said that? When she says that she'll finish it in a month, she means it so buttoned up. Heck yeah, I am gonna finish it in a month. I I need to because that's when um the next Somnium Files games comes out. And I really wanna play that. On release, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'd understood that Professor Hairbrain was from Germany though. Hairbrain's from a respectable British family. Oh, so he's not German. So I shouldn't give him a German accent. After graduating from the University of London, he moved to Germany to carry out research, that's all. So you were students together. I was in the faculty of law, of course, and he in science, so our paths rarely crossed. But curiously, we got along, though I've not met him since my university days. Can't wait to see the finale of this guy in early 2023 of this game. One month. Give me until... The end of June, I'ma do it! <laughs> I certainly didn't expect our next encounter to take this form. And with you of all people representing him. Ugh, only if I make it out of this office alive. He's actually been charged with murder, it seems. Yes, I know, because the prosecution will be handled by me. <laughs> by you? But, but you made it sound as if you and the professor had been friends. We are friends, it's true. Then why would you do this? If the Reaper is the prosecutor, there's nothing anyone can do to save him. He's doomed. <laughs> wow, she just basically implied that his friend is gonna die. Wow, that's harsh, Iris. What's Lord Fanzeek's thinking? You've been playing this game for the last four years. Hey, there were life circumstances, okay? Uh, you can always post it to YouTube to finish it up if you need more time. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, like maybe... Oh! Kirby! Hey, it's so good to see you! Thank you so much for the 30 month sub! Um... But... Yeah, I was thinking maybe some of my series I could just play on my off time and just upload it to YouTube. Like, maybe this one would be good, because th then I could just be like, boom, 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 let's go, finish this. And I could just play, um, Persona 5 Strikers on stream. And, um, and, uh, uh Dragon Quest on stream. Yeah, totally forgot to sub. It's okay. <laughs> I don't even have good emotes. I've been also, I've also been thinking I need to change my emotes, but I have no idea to what. I want to make cute emotes, but I'm just like, how? I don't know. <laughs> you have Dragon Quest to finish. I know! Dragon Quest XI, Persona 5 Strikers. Uh, no bueno, man. And Hollow Knight. <laughs> don't, don't remind me. <sighs> what do you mean by what you said before? If you'd like to know the Reaper's true identity, does that mean... I'm a crown prosecutor and a mortal like any other. I'm no demigod. But they've all died, haven't they? The people you've prosecuted, I mean. Whether or not the trial ended in a conviction or an acquittal. That was a weird accent for her. Those I prosecute are the vilest wretches of our society. People who are without question deserve to be found guilty. The world is a better place without them. But... So does that mean there's someone else in the back? That kills them if they do get let go? Hmm. If you want, if you really want, we can do Hollow Knight co-op online. <laughs> it's been so long since I touched Hollow Knight, I don't... I don't remember how to play that game. 
That's not true of Mr. Natsume, for example. He wasn't the vile wretch at all. No, it was Ginny. In fact, she's ever so hard fucking now. Yeah, what you got to say to that? I can't deny that since I encountered you, things have taken a turn. But the point is this. If any of those vile wretches that escaped justice subsequently died in mysterious circumstances, but was at the hand of their own kind, it's not my work. Lord Strongheart said the same. He believes you're not involved in any way. But you were attacked by those ruffians because they believe it's true. The fact is, since people started to call me the Reaper of the Bailey, the number of serious crimes in the capital has dropped substantially. Oh. It would appear that even the most hardened criminals can be made fearful for their lives. You mean to say... I mean to say that if my pseudonym serves as a useful purpose, I adopt it gladly. Regal! Thank you so much for the 27 months sub! It's been 27 months, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo woo! But it's putting you in danger. You could be killed. If that is my fate, let God decide. Lord Van Zietz. Okay. Uh, sorry. I'm gonna examine your room, cause... Who are you? <laughs> it really looks like a punishment to me. I've never seen someone sit like that before. He hasn't moved muscle since we arrived. Do you think perhaps he's dead? He was dead, you know. He wouldn't be sitting up, would he? He could have died sitting up. Well, anyway, dead or alive, he's not overly approachable, is he? I don't think he's going to talk to us. He's not dead. Or is he? Actually, now that we're in his office, I want to snoop. What are those? That means if he was your prosecutor, you would be dead by now. I hope he never is my prosecutor. Caught my dad literally sleeping, sitting up at a computer. I scolded him to sleep. I actually fell asleep at my work desk today for like an hour. I just leaned back and I was like, okay, I'll just rest my eyes for five minutes. <laughs> and, then, and then I woke up when I heard like a, a message go off. Thankfully, it wasn't for me, but I was just like, oh shoot, I've been here. <laughs> uh, sleeping for an hour. What did you get last week? Other than puppies. Look at all those ancient casts lining the wall there. Casks in the Reaper's chamber? Or are they caskets? You don't think all those people who escaped c c conviction in court are lying inside them? <laughs> the slow way she went. <gasps> Dead, do you? What ridiculous notions are going through your head, man? This is my collection of the fine vintages. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you for clearing that up. Ruin and I were just amusing to ourselves. Don't mind us, Mr. Reaper. I wouldn't if you hadn't invited yourselves to my office to talk nonsense with my earshot. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, wait, that's nothing. Uh, send you the photo on Twitter. Okay, let me keep a good... Who is this? That portrait really dominates the room, doesn't it? It's a very majestic outfit and pose, but sadly, whoever painted it didn't do a very good job of capturing Lord Van Zeke's facial features. Yes, you're right. I mean, it's not far off, but the artist has exaggerated his subject's handsomeness, I think. <gasps> that reminds me, she's just called Van Zeke's ugly. Oh wait, let me check, uh... Whoa, what is this mount? There's kitties! It's a palanquin! Whoa, that's cool! I heard Emperor Napoleon of France ordered artists to make him look more attractive when they painted him. Oh, vain. That's not really an attractive quality in a person, is it? That portrait does not depict me. Surely that's immediately obvious. <laughs> oh, then who is it? Okay, he didn't answer. 
Uh. Ooh, look! The scale model of the Great Exhibition Showgrounds! That's amazing! I wonder why it's here. Perhaps he made it to take his mind off the sadness of being too busy to attend in person. Or perhaps he's too embarrassed to queue up for a ticket. <laughs> Surely it's obvious that I'm using it as an investigative aid. <laughs> ah! You Nipponese have no business painting others as overly reserved. Ugh, I really didn't think he'd overhear that. We are talking in his office. He can hear everything, guys. Oh my gosh. This is so funny. I'm... No! Zanzix is growing on me. No, he can't. He's a jerk. That's the gilded Mikushi mount? Ooh. It is very shiny. Lord Zanzix's desk. Look, it's so stylish. And that's a marble chess set beside it. Chess. That's the western version of our Japanese shogi game, isn't it? You know, I'm actually quite good at shogi problems. Oh, really? You probably like chess problems in that case. I'd love to challenge Lord Van Zeek sometime. To a bout of shogi problems. Wait, I should keep... That's what... You real... If you only really want to challenge yourself, you can always do that on your own at home. Do, do, do. You can buy it from an NPC in-game, it costs 50 million gil. Dude, I barely have 300,000 gil. I... I can't buy anything. Look at that fine collection of hollow chalices and bottles neatly lined up there. My hollowed bottles are filled with the essence of the finest grapes from the finest vineyards I visit. And I personally oversee these chalices being made by the finest crystal craftsmen in the world. And yet you chuck them... <laughs> and yet you throw them around in court like they were worthless. Yes, because this is imbecile is so unimaginably and repeatedly wide of the mark sometimes. Oh. Before you open your mouth next time, you should consider the poor artisans whose work you defile. So, it's my fault? Silly me, how could I ever thought otherwise? Oh no, oh no, he's growing on me. No, I love their banter. Like, like, you know, Ske and Iris just being kids and them. Like, Van Zeke's just being the older brother, like, what are you doing? <laughs> you guys are so dumb. <laughs> uh, there are bats in here. <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh my god. There were bats. Yes, the Reaper's familiar, as I expect. But what about the mute man in the dark cloak? I thought he was a familiar. Not the flying kind. Must be a dear friend of Mr. Reaper, then. I think the family idea is more likely. Scary, though. Either way. Of course, his office is probably echoing. Oh, yeah. Plus, it's like all marble and stone. Like, yeah, it's gotta be a lot of ringing, except for, like, a little bit of rug there. Maybe Jelly's break was a necessary break, so she forgets how much she disliked him. I know, right? <laughs> Are you laughing at me getting scared? Uh... <laughs> I wonder if... Okay, so his apprentice is still not listed as a person. Okay. okay. Um, but we will... Now I'll go to prison. And I'll finish up my conversation there. Uh, okay, I'm going to present... Oh, no, 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 wrong, 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 wrong. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry, useless conversation. Uh, I want- Oh, I can't present people. Then... I can't converse again. Back to the prosecutor's office? Did I miss something? I examined everything. I can't present people. Mm. Anyway. Did I examine everything? It starts with Van Zeke, then that monster from Dragon Quest who makes weird noises when he sees hot women, and then it's Sephiroth. 
never Sephiroth. Never, ever, ever Sephiroth. No. And that mon that creepy monster creep from Dragon Quest, no. No, absolutely not. He was gross. It's the bats again. What am I missing? Shulms is sweet. Is Shulms back? Nope. I don't think there's anything worth examining here. Uh, he should be out of here now. Yeah. I can't examine anything in jail. Did I present the newspaper to, um, shoot, to Van Zeeks? I don't remember if I did. What, what do you say to this? Oops. What do you say to this? Lord Van Zeeks, about the article in this paper. Ah oh, yes, it seems there was a reporter nearby when that little skirmish took place. I had no idea I'd been photographed. It was careless of me. It looks as though it was taken after the people who attacked you had run away, though. Rest assured, the police have already apprehended every last one of them. But there's something else. There's someone else fighting alongside you, it seems. Oh wait, no, we already did this. And I think it's the same man who's sitting over there as we speak, isn't it? As I mentioned already, he's my apprentice. Perhaps you could tell us a little more about him? Oh, okay. New conversation. I need you to do me a favor, GT. Make a character in Lamia and join my FC so I can buy a house and game for our FC. Um... Is Lamia in the same data server? Can I make a new character in Lamia? I didn't hear you say no to Sephiroth. I said no to him. Absolutely not. Nothing will ever make me like Sephiroth. Except for if he stays dead forever. Then I will be like, okay, you're tolerable. Because then I don't see you anymore. You can make one in each server? Oh! Then maybe I will. I'll never use it though, because it's I'm still struggling with with my one character in Famfret. He's in my tutelage to become a prosecutor. So you could say he's my apprentice, I suppose. Ah, like you are to Hurley then, Runo. I don't remember taking an apprenticeship with a great detective. He's currently compiling a report about last night's attack. But he's not writing. It looks like he's wearing some kind of mask? On Lord Strongheart's orders. Nobody knows the man's face, or indeed his identity. But why would you agree to take on such a clearly suspicious individual? Lord Strongheart's orders again. He's not one for meaningless follies. There will be a good reason for his actions. I hope you're right. <gasps> he's gone. Oh, oof. Hello. Ah. The task is complete. Good. In that case, you can coll collate all the briefs. Your mask is scary. Ah. This is scary. Nice to meet you. Back to work again. It was really strange, though. Never met the man before. I didn't even know he existed. And yet, somehow it didn't feel like our first encounter. Has he been tailing you for a while? Don't bother trying to converse with him. He says nothing to anybody from outside this office. Lord Strongheart has strictly forbidden it. Oh, I see. Why are you so interested in my apprentice anyway? Hmm? Oh no, I mean, sorry, I didn't mean to. The way he stood there so casually, yet with that flawless posture. It couldn't be. 
Wouldn't be what? Ah, yes, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Oh, what's that? That Nipponese man. Is he faring well? Sorry? The one arrested twice in succession six months ago. With the stoop, and the mustache, and the jitters. Ah, Mr. Natsume, you mean? I'm not sure he'd be very pleased to find out you identified him from that list, Runo. He's fine, thank you. In fact, I received a letter from him by International Post only the other day. I see. He's still alive. <laughs> well, I think we can end our discussion there, don't you? There's little time left before tomorrow's trial. I advise you spend it in investigating the case. Yes, thank you for the advice. And for the conversation. Can't believe he's asking after Soseki-san. After a Nipponese. I'm not sure whether to feel happy about that or worried. Never imagined that Mr. Reaper would be friends with a mad scientist, did you? That's a turn up for the books. A mad scientist? Ah, you mean Professor Hairbrain. Yes, it might be worth quizzing the professor about his relationship with Lord Van Zeeks, I think. Okay, bye-bye. Now I go back to prison. Okay, converse. The Reaper's varsity years. I understand Lord Van Zeeks is a friend of yours from your university days. Yes, that's right. He was studying law whilst I was studying science. What was he like back then? Hmm, a good question. Unassuming, gentlemanly. An all round nice fellow, really. Uh. Oh, wait. I don't have any money anymore because I bought the Mikoshi mount. JT, I need you to get a mount. I mean, job. And a, a job? In Final Fantasy XIV? You could get jobs? I mean, I've been trying to level my crafting classes, but. I should get on that, actually. I need more money. Sorry, I think you misheard me. I'm talking about the cold-hearted, merciless prosecutor, Barrack von Zeeks. What was he like when he was at university? Talk about a leading question, Runo. As I said, an unassuming and extremely pleasant gentleman. After all, he is the little darling of the Van Zeeks family, with all its great aristocratic origins. I, I didn't realize he had quite such noble blood. Little darling? It was a bit of a shock when I came back to Britain and learned what he'd become. A Reaper at the Bailey, no less. Yes, that's right. I did hear, though. There was a very big event in his life that completely changed him after graduation. Really? What sort of event? Ah! I'm, I'm sorry. But I don't know anymore. I wasn't in the country at the time. I was in Germany already. Oh, yes, of course. He's heard all about the Reaper. Really don't have to hard to tell him that Lord Van Zeeks will be the prosecutor in court tomorrow. Am I going to go to the site to investigate or no? So, Professor, let me just make absolutely sure I've understood you properly. The huge explosion that occurred yesterday, that was an accident you're saying. You had no intention to harm the victim who was in fact the sole investor in your work, is that correct? As correct as two squared is four, I swear it. Yes, it's true that the man perished in the machine of my invention. I know that I'm far from blameless in all this, but still. I would never use my discoveries, my inventions, to take a person's life, not in a centillion years. Well, man of science, it's all I know. You have to believe me, please. Do you believe me? Do you believe in my hypothesis? Science is the pursuit of truth, you know. I've always believed that, all my life. Uh, I need you to join an ERPFC and make some money. I don't know what that means. I'm in the East Coast, so I need to bed. See you next stream. You're in the East Coast now? I thought you were Central. But yeah, Kirby, have a good night. Thanks so much for popping in. It was so good to see you again. See you next time. I'm afraid I don't know much about science or your theories, but I do believe you, and I will fight to prove your innocence with all my might. I'm a man of the law. It's all I know. You have to believe me, please. <laughs> When I went to live in Germany after I graduated, I learned something very important. Nationality, class, lineage, none of that matters. As long as you try your hardest, you can achieve anything. Thank you for that, Professor. And thank you in advance. Defend me tomorrow in court. Alright, Reno. It's time. Time to visit the Great Exhibition. Sorry? 
Well, that's where the incident happened, isn't it? Yes, I suppose that's true. Time to investigate at last. Yeah, I figured I would need to get some evidence. Visiting parents? Ooh, okay, have fun, dude! Nike Ruby? What's that mean? Uh, Smoothie and Kirby, you should join my FC too. <laughs> Ugh, the showgrounds are a little too big for my liking. We've been walking around in dense crowds for two hours now, and I felt myself swooning three times. There are a lot of people, aren't there? I've almost been trodden on three times, too! Be careful, won't you, Iris? Don't let go of my hand. We finally made it through the throngs, though, by the look of it. Here we are, underneath the public experimentation stage where the explosion happened yesterday. What? What's that? I could hear voices from up on the stage. It sounds like an argument. Uh-oh. <gasps> right, I've had a wait you the time. I'm warning you, I'll rest you in a minute. Oh yeah, go on then, Spectre. Give it a shot. You ain't got no evidence and you know it. Wait, I know those voices. You got a cheeky little mouth on you, young lady. But a night in the cells will teach you some manners. Just try it, I dare you. If you want that bag of chips rammed down your throat. And what if I owned the full game? Are you, you can play up to Heaven's Ward with the free trial. Or is it Stormblood? No, Heaven's Ward. Uh, Yoohoo, Grexy! What are you doing up there? And they even hear us? Yep. Oh! Oh! It's you! Here! You're here! Your ladyship! How are you, your ladyship? I do hope you're well, your ladyship. Does that make her three times lady? I'm not well at all. It's far too busy everywhere. I wanted to ride in a balloon, but there was already a three-hour queue. Unbelievable. I'll go and have a word with, uh, for you at once, your ladyship. I'll be flying as high as a kite in no time once I pull some strings for you. This is Gregson. An inspector. He was suspended from duty, but he's back in action now. He loves Iris. Watch, sunshine. Sorry. What gives, then? Don't tell me you're on this case. Yes, I'm acting for the defense. So we're here to investigate. Hmm. Dear me, that's the situation, is it? Is it really that troubling? A measly five bop, is that all you got? You're a lawyer, ain't ya? You can stand to carry a bit more copper around in your pockets, Mr. Narodo. What? Hey, that's my last bit of spending money, that is. Ginny, please give it back. You can have it back, but I'll have to charge you for all the bother. Three bob. Uh. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Can't join FCs if you played a free version? Oh, that sucks. Uh, on my phone, voice text, I pushed the wrong button when trying to correct. Oh, uh, okay. This is Gina Lestrade, pickpocket. I was her defense lawyer. Her coat got fixed. Yo, she's wearing nicer clothes now. What's your problem, Mayoto? Diver, pickpocket? What's with all the name calling? You want a bag of chips thrown down your throat and all, do you? I thought you were proud to be a diver, Gina. We were just arguing with Inspector Gregson about it, weren't you? I assume you'd been up to your usual tricks here at the showgrounds. That ain't no way to talk to a lady, Odo. Half a year's a long time. People can change. I'm an apprentice now. Then it's to be a Scotland Yard detective. You'll have to call me what everyone else does. It's Inspector Lestrade now. In Inspector? That badge is homemade, surely. Inspector Pop isn't entirely accurate. No one calls it that. What's well, worth, anyway? Investigating is off the cards for all of us. What's that supposed to mean? Right, well, I'll be back up top. You hold the fort down here, right? Right, sir. <clears throat> Sorry, need to drink water. This, this raises a whole lot of questions. Okay, so I think I can't... 
examine anything until I talk. So let's talk. <clears throat> I'll be honest, the monthly subscription throws me off. Uh, I like what I've played so far, but I wish a subscription would be done away with. But that's the only way I feel like MMOs can actually make money subscriptions. Because I don't think that many people buy, like, all the stuff with in-game money. Like, all the gl glamours, costumes, and whatnot. Like, not enough people buy those. But they have to do subscription. Yeah. <sighs> But if they did away with the subscription service, I'd be like, heck yes, I'm playing this more, but... I mean, I should play it more because I'm paying money for it and I need to get my money's worth, but... Eh, life. It was eight months ago, yeah, 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 yeah. She was pickpocket, she was poor, but now she has a job. A lot of time to think in prison. I realized I couldn't go on like I was. The diamond weren't working out. Oh, so pleased to hear it, Jenny. Well done. So, you went from being a pickpocket to a detective. You got a... good, in it? Inspector Lestrade. Sounds like something out of a book, eh? Talk about a sea change. And then there's Iris' old man to think about. Iris' father, you mean? Yeah, I promised her, didn't I? I said to get all the police forces around the world to pull out all the stops looking for him. Just a small promise, then. Nothing serious. Oh, Ginny. You're so sweet. So anyway, that's how I had a go at the test for Scotland Yard. Only trouble is, I don't read so well, do I? Just a small problem. Nothing serious. And that's when Hurley approached Gregsy and asked for help. Though the inspector said he'd take full responsibility for Ginny and made her a sort of apprentice. That was very magnanimous of Inspector Gregson. And brave. Well, you know Hurley. He enjoys finding ways to make people do what he wants. The great detective likes digging for dirt, in other words. So, the long and short of it is, if you've got questions about the case, you can ask Inspector Lestrade. Right then, Inspector. Actually, there's still a big mystery surrounding Gina, isn't there? Ooh, what, you know what? How do they read my mind? Well, six months ago, Gina was a defendant in a trial prosecuted by the Reaper. A trial in which she was found not guilty, and yet here she is still. Come on, you're not still on about that, are you? The Legend of the Reaper, or whatever it's called. Cool, you don't have to worry, Odo. I didn't have to worry. There probably wouldn't be a whole lot of you left. It's like I told you before, innit? The Reaper's kind of like I'm him upstairs, so he knows what I'm like on the inside. That ain't that I ain't really done nothing wrong. Wow, that was hard to read. Nothing wrong might be stretching points. What about Mr. Natsumi in Japan? He's perfectly fine, isn't he? Well, that's true. Perhaps the Reaper is more discerning than I thought. Exactly. So I ain't worried. I'm totally fine. I'd rather pay $60 for the game and buy add-ons and expansions. Um, that's true. I mean, I did buy the full game when it was bundled with Heaven's Ward, and then I bought the expansions for Stormblood and Shadowbringers and Endwalker. How much were the expansions? They couldn't have been the price of a full game, right? Or were they? <gasps> wow. I spent a lot of money on Final Fantasy XIV. I really should play it more. Cool, it was out of this world, it was. Rainy Bloke pulled a bunch of levers on his machine and suddenly started billowing smoke. And it just went pop. I ain't seen better experiments here yet. Sorry? You mean, you saw it, Ginny, with your own eyes. Yeah, of course. The boss is in charge here, ain't he? Of keeping everything running smooth, I mean. The boss being Inspector Gregson, I suppose. That's going to take some getting used to. All I have to say is that I'm on duty and I can do whatever I want to. Get this, I was up in one of them flying balloons when it happened, watching it from above. No, you're so lucky, Jenny. Maybe I should join Scotland Yard too. Yeah, do it. You know how to uh, put the boss in his place alrighty. Right, Iris? You'd have no trouble at all. And it's settled. When do I start? No, no, no. You can't join Scotland Yard, Iris. We'll see. Anyway, what I don't understand is this. If the machine exploded so spectacularly, how can Professor Bunnybrain still be claiming that his experiment was a success? Success. Oh, right. Well, it was a success, in a way. It was? How can it have been? Successful experiments? 
Surely after the whole machine blew up, no one could call the experiment a success. It's like I said, it did sort of work. I mean, yeah, there was a load of smoke and all that whopping great bang. But where do you think they found the victim's body, eh? In the crystal tower over there! What? In the tower? So it can't have been from the explosion because he was in the tower when he died. So... what? You can see for yourself, can't you? Up there above the scaffold. Oh, well the glass is broken, you mean. Yeah, the cage, what the victim got in to start with. He really did get beamed through the air or whatever and landed all the way over there. So, you see, it did kind of work, didn't it? What? I don't believe it. I mean, I don't get the ins and outs of it, but if it's possible, right? With science. Oh, I told you what, you can have this. It's planted the experiment they drew up at the yard. Are you sure? Yeah, go on. I had three bob off you before, so fair is fair. Yes, I didn't actually give that to you, did I? <laughs> Sketch of the experiment has been added. Before I examine it, I'm gonna finish talking to her. Something Inspector Gregson said before seemed a little strange. Well, it's worth it anyway. First game is off the call for all of us. Yes, not old Grixie ran off after that without explaining himself. Oh, right, that. Also, no one's allowed to investigate that weird machine what blew up yesterday. That's not fair. We're representing defendants. In that case, could you at least tell us what you've learned from your investigations? Nah, you're not getting it. We ain't allowed to investigate neither. Why? What did the boss call him again? The Forensic Investigation Team, I think. Anyway, apart from them, what? No one's allowed to lay a finger on the scene. Bit funny, isn't it? So even Stockton Yard's own detectives can't investigate. Yes, I've never seen or heard something like that before. Well, I could have a gander on the quiet, though, but the boss caught me at it. Probably owe him giving me an earful about it before from down here, didn't you? It's not playing fair. I think you were giving him as much of an earful back as I remember it. Yeah, well, sometimes I think it's all chips what make him so stubborn. You say something to him, Odo. Go on, see if you can get through to him. He's up on the platform above us, isn't he? Where the machine that exploded is. We can try, can't we, Runo? Rex even listen to us. Okay, now I'm going to try to examine at least the stuff on the floor. Oh, look, what's this? A ripped piece of cloth. Hmm, it's not like any fabric I've ever seen before. It's very thick and stiff. It looks extremely durable. It's canvas, I think, with some sort of rubber backing. And the edges appear to be a bit charred as well. Maybe that means it had something to do with the explosion. Let's make a note of it while Ginny's bit yawn. A piece of green cloth has been entered. And snoop! <laughs> For some reason, the ground is damaged in this spot. Look! Almost as if there was a fire here or something. Yes, if you look closely, there's some scattered ash and birds embers too. Well, I suppose there was a big explosion just above here. People probably wouldn't bat an eyelid at a small fire like this would have been. I'm not sure why we English are quite that laid back right now. Okay, yeah, but then there's this weird thing. Ah, oh, it looks as though someone dropped something behind the tree just here. Dropped or hid. It looks like a crossbow. What is this? Some part of the machine that exploded? Maybe. It could have fallen from the platform above in the blast, perhaps. What's going on here? Oh, nothing. I think I'll hang on to this, just in case. It's a crossbow. <laughs> like, if the subscription came with something else, I wouldn't mind, like, access to certain games I don't own. For example, Xbox Game Pass comes with games on Xbox Live and sometimes you get sales. I do get it, though. I guess that makes sense, like, if you pay one, like, one fee and it's like, hey, you have access to all this, and if you want all the extras that are not, like, really main game, then you could pay an extra fee and just enjoy that for yourself. I get it, I get it. But yeah, so, mm, I don't think they'll ever drop the subscription, though. It is so fun, though. Except Stormblood got kind of boring. For 14, I think it's worth the $13 I pay a month because I play it like six hours a day. Six hours a day? How? How, Regal? Oh my gosh. I would love to play, be able to play six hours a day. But I do too many other things. Uh. 
Okay, now I'm going to... I don't think I have to examine that. Or do I? Uh, just in case, examine everything. Oh, no, not that. Okay. Crystal Tower. Certainly an apt name. It was built to be the focal point of the exact exhibition, and it definitely is being so tall with all the glass. Can't imagine a building like this ever being erected in Japan. And then Skytree happened. There are lots of exhibits inside the tower as well, apparently. Of course, there's an observation deck, but there's also an art gallery, a zoo, and a museum. I heard you have to queue for three hours just to get through the doors. Well, at the moment, the shattered glass from the failed experiment may, be, may well be the biggest draw. Thanks to that accident, the whole tower shut. Suddenly, it's not the crystal tower anymore, but the crystal glass shower. Ha ha ha. Apparently, everyone's taking to the skies now to look down the disaster area from above instead. There's a three hour queue to go up in a balloon now. Londoners must be very patient people. Okay, not literally like three hours. That's still like. How do I go up? Oh. That's still a lot of time, man. I wish I could play that much. But then I guess if I stream, I'm still playing like hours of game, so. Hmm. I mean, most of the time I'm also watching YouTube, something I have in the background. True, 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 true. Yeah, you're like watching something, but also like playing. I get it, I get it. That's what a curve ended up after its instant kinesis, or whatever they called it. Dead, of course. And yet they're calling the experiment a success. What's the wooden scaffold there for? The coppers, our lads, set that up after the incident happens. To get the body down, I think. Dunno, really. Didn't you help erect the scaffold then? Nah, lookout duty is more my thing. Wandering around the exhi exhibition and keeping a lookout for the fun stuff. Mind Gregson doesn't hear you saying that, or he'll give you the boot. It's incredible though, isn't it? I mean, could the victim really have bridged that gap by some sort of invisible kinesis? Or was it him at all inside the original ball? I've been meaning to ask you for a while now, but what are those funny round blobs floating in the sky? Oh, they're the flying balloons I've been talking about. I want to go up in one so much. I've read about situations like this in a magazine about strange phenomena. Creatures from outer space coming in round flying objects to attack Earth. What? I suppose inhabitants of other planets are bound to be interested in the great exhibition. This is it, Iris. It's happening. It's not. Don't worry. I'll explain it all to you later over a nice cup of tea, Runo. Okay, I think I gotta move? This platform must have been set up for the experiment, I suppose. It's very high up. About 30 feet above the ground, apparently. That's what a policeman I just spoke to said. I don't really understand feet very well. We don't use them in Japan. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. It's about 9 meters. But soon you'll have been in London for a year, Runo. Right it's time you get used to our measurements. Yes, well... The thing is so tall, the spectators at the front would just have seen a wall, nothing else. I probably thought they'd secure the best spot to watch from, only to be disappointed. There's a saying in Japan, the darkest spot is right under the lighthouse. I feel like it probably applies here. Can I move to the top? Nope. Uh, so how do I reach Gregson? These stairs obviously lead to the stage above. We should go up there and investigate the exact spot where the experiment was being conducted. That's how I move. Uh, have there ever been sales on their subscriptions? I don't think so. I think it's been a set, steady, consistent, like, $12, $13 a year. A month. Each month, yeah. Sometimes I literally play other games while playing 14. I mean, I'm watching you and I'm on 14. It's making my party members very upset with me because I keep dying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so that's it, is it? The machine that blew up. Ew, it must have been a magnificent explosion. Now I've seen my fair share. You've seen things like this before, you mean? Of course. Hurley's always doing experiments that end in a bang. In fact, in his own words, explosions are the very essence of chemistry. Ah, that might explain the smell of burning that frequently comes wafting up the stairs. One time, he made something that exploded with such force, it took the roof off the building. I wish you'd been there to see it, Runo. 
It's hard to get too excited about that, given that I now live in the roof. Well, anyway, that's enough about that. It's time to investigate. Ah, look, Inspector Gregson is over there. He seems to be deep in thought about something, while styling up the machine carefully. Really? He just looks confused to me. Do 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 do. Do do. Boo -doo -boo -doo -boo. Let me examine stuff first. Uh, okay. This thing. It ripped itself apart magnificently, didn't it? Magnificently and mercilessly. If someone stands in the middle of the machine to be disassembled, then beamed through the air. Yes, beamed. Not blasted. That's the point. Yes, that part's crucial, really. Is something like that even possible, the virus? Oh, Runo, I'm just a child. How should I know? A child when it suits you, you mean. From what I can tell, I think if you were to pull this lever here... Stop! Don't touch that! <laughs> that was practically instantaneous kinesis the way you flew over just now, Gexie. Please, your ladyship. I didn't mean to stall you, but I can't let you touch anything up here. So sorry, you can have some of my little special blend to make up for it. Glug, 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 glug. Ah, wonderful. That stuff is really wonderful. It's just like old times, this is. Didn't be too weird for them flying lanterns. <laughs> We're representing Professor Hairbrain in court tomorrow, Inspector. But we should be allowed to examine the scene. Ha! Listen, Sunshine, even I'm not allowed to touch anything up here. A blasted special dispensation for scientific equipment. And to blame, it's driving me putty. Oh yes, that special dispensation. The professor mentioned that too. More red tape's all we need. I don't know what the government thinks it's playing at sometimes. But we're allowed to just look, aren't we? What? Surely that's all right, isn't it, Gregsy? Of course, your ladyship. Anything you say, your ladyship, but don't get your dainty hands dirty, will you? Don't worry. We wouldn't dream of touching anything, would we, Runo? She really knows how to get what she wants. Okay, I guess we gotta talk. Government policy. Using high-voltage electricity to somehow disassemble a man's body, and then beam him across to the Crystal Tower. It's an extraordinary thing to attempt, especially in public. True, it was by far the most unusual of his experiments planned for the exhibition mind. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised it was allowed. Carrying out something so dangerous with so many spectators present, I mean. The government's doing everything it can to promote new science and technology at the moment. More worried about being ahead of the game than the odd spot of public safety infringements. They can be the first to develop some new technology, it makes Britain more powerful in the future, you see. Yes, I suppose that's true in a way. The powers that be are placing a heavy emphasis on scientists' rights at the moment. What sort of rights? But making it so that any theories the brains have remain their legal property, as it were. Right through developing it to a practical idea and even going into production. It's the infuriating reason those coppers aren't allowed to touch this crime scene. Because the new highfalutin special dispensation force blah 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 forbids it. Ah, I see now. The only people with permission to investigate here are some from brand new department at the yard. The forensic investigation team, it's called. They've been relegated to keeping guard. A forensic investigation team. Any old fool can see this is the heap This heap of scrap metal was a sham to begin with. Just because it says scientific equipment on the paperwork, you can't do a flaming thing with it. Oh, Gregsy, it's very head up, isn't he? I gotta play tunic? I have never heard of tunic. What is tunic? Remind me again, what's this new legal act that means we're not allowed to touch the scene here? Oh, you have it at me, Sin Sign. It's a special blah 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 blah. Hmm, yes, I think Hurley mentioned that recently. A real twinkle in his eye, as I remember. I'm sure he did, Your Ladyship, I'm sure he did. Passed especially for this great exhibition it was. All scientists have to do is present their ideas or inventions of, to some suits in the civil service, and it gets rubber stamped. There's a guarantee of rights to maintain the invention's confidentiality. What does that really mean? Think about it. Think of all the world-changing new inventions on display every day at this ex exhibition. Although a good half of them are a load of cobblers, if you ask me, put forward by shammers like yourself. I 
Thanks for that. Oh, I love how absurd some of the inventions here are. It's all so fun. It might be fun to you, but a member of the Force has to be present at every single demonstration. Can you imagine, eh? Thanks, science, that's what I say. Oh, I don't think so. That sounds like my dream job. You'd soon think otherwise after spending a day guarding all these Shammer's bogus contraptions. But if they're all bogus, how can anyone hope to demonstrate them? There'd be no point. Yeah, well, there's a point, sadly. Sorry. Next to another of our government's bright ideas, if any theory or invention is deemed to show potential, the government hands out a research grant. Scientists get funding. Exactly. And that's what they're all after. All these shammers coming from far and wide to clog a pipe park. Who has to keep it all safe? Who has to smile politely and welcome them? Us couples, that's who. You can see why I say it now, can't you? Hang science, hang it! Oh, maybe I can see a point. Burger. Uh, Tunic is a game where you play as a fox. Ooh, cute! Uh, I think you would love it. Do you want any of this Prime stuff, by the way? I never use any, but... What Prime stuff? Mr. Scotty, beam, beam me up, leave the guy in red by themselves. He'll be fine. <laughs> no, beam everybody up! Apparently, Professor Hairbrain lives and works in Germany, now conducting his research. That's right. Came back to Britain especially for the Great Exhibition, as I understand it. Probably after one of the government's research grants. Hmm. Actually, we learned something else about the professor earlier today. About his time in further education, it turns out he was at university with someone we both know. Lord Van Zeeks. <laughs> What's that? That's news to me. But what if Van Zeeks demands the prosecution, then, as they accuse, the professor's fate is... Sealed? Because the Reaper will get him one way or another? Blimey, that man's beyond me. I don't know what goes on in that head of his. Talking of Van Zeeks, this morning's paper ran the story of him being attacked. Read that. Oh yes, but Mr. Reaper's completely fine. Nothing to worry about. Yes, right. Glad to hear it. Still, the Reaper, huh? How long's that business gonna keep up, I wonder? Mystery of the Reaper. The victim of this case, the investor, Mr. Asman. He was another one of the Reaper's victims, or so I heard. Lord Barrett von Zeeks is a top-class prosecutor. Well, even he can't always push the right verdict through. Sometimes justice can't win. Yes, I've heard about jurors being bribed and evidence being falsified. And that's how the notion of the Reaper de Bailey came about, isn't it? Obviously, Scotland Yard suspended van Zeeks initially. We all assumed he was taking matters into his own hands if he failed to seal a deal in court. Although the man himself denies that charge. Well, we've done a very thorough investigation, and the conclusion we reached is that Lord Van Zeeks is in no way related to the deaths of those people outside the courtroom. There's no question in my mind. I'd stake my reputation on it, I would. But if that's true, then how do you explain it? All those defendants couldn't just have coincidentally died if nobody killed them. Someone was targeting them because they knew they got acquitted from his trials, duh. I, I don't know why we're making such a big deal out of this. I know that, but I can't explain it. It's a mystery after all, isn't it? That's the whole point of the Reaper. Professor Hairbrain mentioned something else. He said that at university, Lord Van Zeeks was a totally different person, easygoing and kind. What? He said that it was after they both graduated that something happened to change the man. Do you have any idea of what it was? No clue. Really? Look, I've got my hands full watching over this frustrated crime scene. Why don't you go and make a nuisance of yourself elsewhere, eh? Hmm. Then I examine now. Uh, do I examine the machine again? Considering how badly damaged everything is, Professor Hairbrain was lucky to escape unscathed, I say. We should have a good look around the machine while we can, I think. Touch anything, I'll make sure I kill you before I get strung up myself, you hair. I wouldn't touch this. I won't touch a thing, I promise. So please, spare a thought for your digestion. Anyway, do you really think this machine could actually disassemble people like the professor claims? Yes, looking totally incredulous. Give it a rest, sunshine. If we were allowed to examine all this bleeding and scrap metal, maybe we could answer that question. We can't, can we? Because of the annoying rules, you mean. Exactly. The annoying, obtrusive flaming rules. Oh, look at the base of the machine there. Oh, yes. There's a tool of some kind poking through the wire mesh. 
It's a screwdriver, I think. Oh, isn't it a lovely one? The handle's in the shape of a capital letter A. Is it? Oh, yeah. You're right. What's the matter with you? Don't touch anything, I said. Touching anything, I'll make sure I kill you before I get strung up myself, I said. Yes, yes, I understand. Sorry. I only touched a teeny weeny bit. See, I'm very curious about the screwdriver. Really, very, very curious. Of course, your ladyship. You're so clever, your ladyship. Fancy spotting something like this. But I'm afraid I can't let you have it. But Bruno found it first. I assure you, I'll investigate it thoroughly. He's gone off with it. That was very mean. I'm afraid Inspector Gregson is going to make a very clumsy and embarrassing mistake in next month's installment now. Poor Gregsy. Is that all we can examine? Oh, he's back. Right. Are you done here, Mr. Nodohodo? Sorry? Is not about time you were leaving? Or rather, it is about time you were leaving. That lot are here now. That lot? The forensic investigation team. They'll be giving me the heave ho in a minute, too. Oh dear, poor Gregsy. Here, have another cup of my special blend to cheer you up. Glug, 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 glug. Ah, that hits a spot. You're pits it every time. Well, at least I've seen the sea with my very own eyes. It looks like this is as far as we're going to get with our investigations here, at least. I've been thinking. Hurley might know something, mightn't he? About what? About Mr. Reaper. About what happened to Lord Van Zeeks, you mean? Because it sounds like something very significant occurred after he graduated from university. Something that completely changed his life. Maybe, but I have no idea where to find Mr. Sholmes at the moment. He's in the middle of some big case, isn't he? Here, this is what you need. What's this? Some kind of entrance ticket? Madam to spells. Is this supposed to mean something to me? I don't know it. It's the most popular attraction in London at the moment. Very close to Baker Street, actually. You could go now if you like. No, no, we don't have time for visiting attractions today, Iris. We have a big trial tomorrow. But that's where Hurley is. What? At, at this popular London attraction? Yes. How's that you know where he is? Hurley told me, but he told me to keep it a secret from you, Runo. Madame to spells. I don't see how it could be related to the case we're investigating here, but then... Ranger things have happened, and when they happen, Mr. Holmes is usually at the heart of them. Oh my gosh, I thought I was going to be done. I thought this would have been the checkpoint, but we have another place to examine. Ugh. And I'm not gonna stop until we hit a checkpoint just so I could finish this game faster. <sighs> oh. Whoa. Dark? What is this place? Look at all these terrifying scenes. Why are all the people so still? Guillotines? Ruthless murderers? I know what I'll be dreaming about tonight. They're all wax models. They're amazingly realistic, aren't they? What do you think, Reno? Shocked? Wax models? Ah! I, I read about dead bodies in wax once, in a magazine about strange phenomena. Depending on how corpses are kept after death, parts of them can turn to wax, apparently. It's called a... a... a dip... a dip... what? A dipasir? A dipakir? I don't know how to pronounce that. Don't talk about creepy things like that, Runo. You're scaring me. Anyway, a dip blah, blah, blah doesn't form readily, you know? It's only in very... ah! What now? I've... I've just remembered something else I read in another magazine about strange phenomena. There was an old lady, you witch, who used to pour molten wax over corpses and put them on display. None of the exhibits in here are real. If you have a nightmare, just bring a Digimon into your dreams. War dream. <laughs> They're all entirely man-made replicas. It can't be. Do you really expect me to believe that? Just look at them. Oh. There's no way anybody could make models of people that are this realistic. Artist. Oh my gosh, there's... <laughs> there's shows. 
And they're all such gruesome scenes. Wait. What is it? Oh, no. I must be seeing things. First of all, oh my word! There is an arm. Is this an arm? Looks like an arm, doesn't it? Maybe one of the waxwork models has fallen over. You don't think it could be the work of one of these mass murderers in here, do you? Bruno, stop scaring me! Is it a wax arm? Or a real one? Come oh, on, you're always pointing to that finger of yours in the court. Hook that arm now and see how it feels. Objection! <gasps> is this a pigeon? <laughs> is this a butter? Wait, yeah, is this a pigeon? Oh gosh. I don't want to examine everything. This is creepy. Like, I know this security guard is real. Like, he's sleeping. These models are so well made. I can't tell what's a waxwork and what's a real human. Maybe. All the exhibits are real people. And when it's closing time and all the visitors have gone home, they suddenly stop moving about. Ugh, just thinking about it makes me wish it was closing time already and I was on my way home. Okay, that's all we gotta say about that dude. It's... it's... The Great Detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes has his own wax statue in here? Really? No, he's the real deal. Well, he is world famous after all. It's an uncanny resemblance, isn't it? It makes my skin crawl to look at it. No! But look, Runo, you can kick this Hurley and he doesn't move a muscle! <sighs> oh my gosh! He kicked him. You can't go around kicking the exhibits, Iris! Wait. It, it just moved, I'm sure, and not just a little bit either. Yeah, I really wanted to slap him too. Just like, POW! <laughs> but I am not in control of Yunosuke, so sadly I cannot. Hmm? Really? Did it? And look closely. There are beads of sweat on the face. Of this waxwork model. Don't jump out at me. Thank you. Shall we move on, Iris? Over there, look! There's a great burger scene to enjoy. Much more appealing. <gasps> Frack! <laughs> that scared me. <gasps> My dear fellow, I take exception to your recoiling in such a manner as if you've seen something truly abhorrent. Mr. Sholmes. Knew it. Iris, what possessed you? Strictly forbade you from divulging my temporary waxwork secret to Mr. Nadahudo. Temporary waxwork? What do you mean? And that kick! Could you not have exercised a little more restraint? You winded me! That Runo has something he needs to ask you. Reminds me when that corpse came back to life and you freaked out. Yes! It was scary! I thought he was dead. And then he just slowly sat up and it's just like, what the F? Why is the second game a lot freakier? It's weird. Ah, a question. I thought you'd probably be getting bored too. But here we are! Hmm, well I can't deny that your timing was impeccable. A mere two minutes more being stationary like that. My great brain, upon which all my success has been built, would have turned to wax. Thank goodness we arrived in time. Indeed, in many ways, the pair of you just saved the world from an unimaginable loss. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Hurley, you do like to talk nonsense, don't you? You can know something, it's true, about Lord Van Zeeks and what happened in the past to change him. Now that you're here, let's take our time. How can I be of assistance? Well, you're in luck. I'm suddenly quite taken with the idea of conversing. Oh, well, actually, I'm in quite a hurry. And if my eyes don't deceive me, I believe something is afoot within the walls of this very museum. A most fascinating case, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Moreover... I have a strong suspicion that it is related to the matter about which you've come to me now. But how could it be? <gasps> the green cloth! That arm has a green... The green, um... A green jacket. It could be the same. 
We shall speak again presently, my dear fellow, but for now, I must return to my work. What? Back to being a temporary waxwork exhibit? Uh, is this lost? Oh my gosh, why would you say that? Why would you say that, Regal? Can I talk with you? Yes, I can. What is this place? Madame Tispels came to London from France three years ago, I understand. Since she opened this little waxwork museum last year, it's enjoyed great popularity in London. There are museums like this in Japan, too. Wait, that's Junosuke. But these displays are something else. I mean, they aren't made from actual real people, are they? The extreme realism of these waxwork models is a particular secret of the Tispels family, they say. <laughs> the wax is related. The people are gonna... The dude's gonna be a wax figure that went into the ball, and the, the real dude was in the Crystal Tower, and he was already dead by the time the explosion happened. That is my theory. Extreme realism... Uh, uh, did I read this? I don't know. The extreme realism of these waxwork models is a particular secret of the Tispels family, they say. They earned renown during the French Revolution for waxworks of victims of the guillotine. Ugh, that sounds grim. The gruesome scenes were portrayed with such realism in the expressions of the faces of the contem condemned. Apparently, the sculptors would make the models ex directly from the corpses right there at the site of the executions. At the... That really turns my stomach. That's just one of several legends about the Tuspels family. Whether there's any truth in it, I couldn't say. But anyway, this museum houses models of famous people from all over the globe. Nevertheless, the most popular area of the museum by quite some margin is this House of Horrors. House of Horrors? Of course, visitor numbers are dwindling now as a result of the Great Exhibition. But people usually flock here to see the exhibits of some of London's most vile criminals at their gruesome work. Naturally, most of the miscreants portrayed here were sent to the gallows. But they're even stiffer now than the models of them. Ha 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 Have you heard of poor taste? My dear fellow, the public live for poor taste. They yearn to be shocked. So the hideous exhibits in here are... They're all portrayals of real events that actually took place. Is it just me, or did the temperature in here just seem to drop? That's what I was thinking, you guys! Anyway, I advise you not to think too deeply about what you see here. Oh, he's back to being a waxwork, is he? Temporary waxwork. What do you mean by a temporary waxwork, Mr. Sholmes? Exactly what you see. I'm part of the exhibits here, catching these criminals in the act. Catching them? Every half hour, I become- I home in on a different killer in one of the displays and adopt a new pose to ensnare him. When members of the public come for a closer look, I offer them my hand to shake. For a shilling, I'll happily allow them to take a photograph with us. Us? Does he mean him and the waxwork murderers in here? But why, Mr. Sholmes? My dear fellow, isn't it obvious? For the money! Really roared at me there. Very fitting for the House of Horrors. As it stands, I may struggle to pay this month's rent. I have the ravenous iris to consider. Oh, Hurley. So hungry. If push comes to serve, I shall have to ask you to do your bit, Mr. Nodhodo. What's he threatening to rope me into now? So with that in mind, how about a photograph? It's a special treat, you may have your pick of the murderers and scoundrels in here. The choice is yours. Maybe some other time. <laughs> Remember, Mr. Nadohodo, ah, ignore me at your peril. <laughs> Back to being a waxwork again. This is just me, or did his final remark there sound a lot like a curse? Something to ask you. Oops, who left this yaoi paddle lying here? <laughs> well... What is it you'd like to ask me, then? Um, actually, it's... about Lord Van Zeeks. Ah, our friend Mr. Reaper. Could you find him? Well, I trust. Yeah, a bunch of bats flew towards me. And so I felt Mr. Sholmes in about everything I learned. About Lord Van Zeeks, about Professor Harebrain, and about the strange coincidence that they had been at university together. So I'm wondering what uh, it was that happened to make Lord Van Zeeks such a different person. 
I was sure that you'd know, Hurley. You said there was something going on here in this exhibit hall before. That something was afoot. And that you believed it was related to what I wanted to ask you about. Um, Mr. Sholmes, he suddenly clammed up. Well, it seems we've reached a- what? Wait, what, 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 what? I didn't press anything. We've reached the unavoidable things. A witch? Oh, uh, hello. Where did she appear from? And what's she wearing? Could she look any more mysterious? I hope you are appreciating my museum. Oh, she's Madame Tuspel. Sorry, have we? Mr. Sholmes, do you know this? Not again. My apologies. I am Esmeralda to Spells. This is my museum of waxwork. What? You? You're the Madame to Spells? Yen Su, the the only twenty six years young, I might add. Is that significant somehow? I'm a madam in name only. It adds a certain je ne sais quoi. Right. Rip stream. Why? Why is stream going down? Why? No. What's wrong with internet today? That's so weird. Well, I'm gonna continue recording. I'll just put all this up on YouTube later. Firstly, I must apologize for my waxworks. Or rather, one waxwork in particular. That'll be Mr. Sholmes, then. I was led to believe he was a great detective, but he seems unable to settle. <gasps> Next time you move from your designated exhibit, there will be toil and trouble. Oh my gosh. She sounds deadly serious. Looks like we're back. Yeah, I don't know why stream is going down so much today. Weird. That's the problem. How am I supposed to ask Mr. Scholz about Lord Van Zeke's now? Let's not forget about what Hurley said before. About something being afoot. Right here in the museum, I mean. Yes, I know, but... I'm so curious, I want to know what's happening here. Haven't we got enough on our plate already? Do I have to converse with you now? This is so long. This is so long. The wax works. Did you make all these waxworks, Madam Two Spells? I did. I am the third generation of waxwork artisans, you know. Gosh! It was my grandmother who began the tradition in my family. Her fortunes were checkered, though living through the turbulent times of the French Revolution as she did. But that is when she acquired the savor... Savor... I don't know French. At least the astonishing lifelikeness. All these waxworks really do like a... As though they're alive. That's what she said. Ah, no! In fact, they look more alive than Hurley. <laughs> what you see exhibited here represents the most atrocious of London's criminal past. All the waxworks were created in the presence of real people on which they are modeled. In the hours immediately following their executions. That is the secret to the extraordinary lifelikeness. That sounds... Terrifying. All walks of life have similar challenges, I'm sure. To carry out one's trade par excellence, one must go to extraordinary lengths. My exhibits are a reflection of society. I create only that which the public wishes to see. Ugh. Why couldn't the public have wished for something less horrifying? Do not fear. Sorry? This room is the only one in the museum with such a mac macabre theme. I do hope you'll explore. There are models of famous singers, actors, politicians. Something for every taste, I hope. It was Iris who dragged me straight in here, come to think of it. Sorry, perhaps I should have eased you into things. Great detective waxwork. Um, what's the situation with that? Ah, my temporary waxwork model. He approached me some days ago, you see, with a business proposal. Oh? What sort of proposal? My dear madam, what this boss of the needs is the addition of a world famous great detective. All words to that effect. Uh, 
Naturally, I am well aware that Mr. Sholmes is widely known in London as a talented de detective. It's great detective, actually. He's very specific about it. Yes, the creme de la creme. So I was keen to come to some arrangement with him, of course. But sadly, we were unable to agree terms. Let me guess, someone wanted to charge an exorbitant price for his services. For a mere 500 pounds, I will dive into your culture of wax this very moment! Oh my gosh. Well, words to that effect. Mr. Sholmes might have overdone it slightly with the sales pitch. Regrettably, the museum has a shortage of funds at the moment due to unforeseen circumstances. So we came to the current arrangement instead. Surely he doesn't really need to do what he's doing though, does he? I would think not, but he was very insistent. I have a 50 shilling problem that must be resolved by the morning. All words to that effect. It's the pawnbroker, that's what it is. He must have something to redeem. Is it the consulting detective work that goes so well? Something afoot. Um, I wonder, could I ask you something? Yes, sir. I'm just curious, is anything going on in the museum at the moment? Some kind of incident, perhaps? Whoever suggested such a thing to you? Oh, well, it was... Your temporary waxwork over there who mentioned it to me a little... Oh, he's disappeared! A wax model is a work of art, not some tawdry object for trade. Ah, who said that? You. There you are. Leaving the exhibit again when you should be working. Do you wish to be melted down? My dear Madame to spells, save your reprimands. There are more pressing concerns. The wax can wait. It's our ideas about your current problem we must throw into the melting pot instead. Personally, I would advise you not to involve the police. Why ever not? She's turned as white as a sheet. Because you have at your disposal a great detective whose services you may employ for a mere 50 shillings. Though so please be aware that I prefer... No, I insist upon payment in advance. Very well. Let us see if the great detective is able to live up to his name, shall we? Oh no, it's gonna be a... Uh... A deduction. Deducing. Right? If that happens, then I have to end stream, because it's getting late, and I'm getting- How long have I been- Let's see. It says I've only been streaming for six minutes now, because stream died, like, twice, but... I've been streaming for two hours and 18 minutes. Oh, gosh. Okay, so I'll keep going. If a deduction happens- Whoops. Uh, then I'm just gonna save here. You only stream for like six minutes. Yeah, for this leg. But I started recording two hours ago. Before I engage my analytical processes, I must ask you to clarify something. What, pray, is behind the curtain? That is a spell's special exhibit. There's an extra charge to see it. Ah, the special exhibit in the House of Horrors. It must have picked a special killer then, I presume. Would you be so kind as to draw back the curtain, I wonder? Ah, absolutely not! There's nothing amiss behind there. Nothing amiss, madam. What about the arm protruding ominously from under the curtain? Ah! I strongly encourage you to allow me to see what lies beyond before the situation worsens. You have a lot to make up for. Your debt must be... No, I know. That's why I'm trying to get through this as fast as I can. I was trying to reach a checkpoint, but I don't think it's gonna happen. But we'll see. Yes, very well. I will draw back the curtains, but only a sous-son? I hope that's how you pronounce it. I don't know French. I must confess, I peeked behind the curtain earlier. The Dispel's special exhibit is a very bleak graveyard scene indeed. And yet, somewhat surprisingly, the waxwork killer one would expect is nowhere to be seen. What does strike one, however, is the portly gentleman lying peacefully on his back on the floor. 
Is he real? Oh, well then perhaps Mr. Sholmes? That man on the floor is the ruthless killer himself. I'm afraid not, my dear fellow. He's perfectly ordinary London gentleman. Not even a waxwork, in fact. What? As skillfully made as these waxworks are, they are always distinguishable from real humans. So, allow me to present my two conclusions. The first is that a sizable business transaction has been taking place in this special exhibit. Why would you say that? And the second is that the aforementioned transaction is linked to a serious crime. Ah! She looks as pale as candle wax. I... I don't understand. So, Madam Suspells, as you've agreed to my fee, you shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famously great detective and temporary exhibit at work. I can't. I can't. I'm too tired. I can't deduce. I'm too tired to deduce. My... My mouth is so dry. My tongue is getting tired. My ears hurt from headphones. I'm sorry. I can't. Um, options. Oh. Save. Oh my gosh. Um. Oh. It's this one. Yeah. <coughs> There's a checkpoint right after the corpse reveal. Right after this? Right after this deduction? Are you for sure, Regal? If there's a checkpoint right after this deduction, then I will deduce. <laughs> but if there is more investigation or talking, I need to stop. <laughs> Let me double check with a walkthrough. Oh, my tongue. Oh, my throat. Um, great ace. Attorney... Chronicles walk through... Let's just go to Polygon! Mm. Oh! Huh? Okay, terrible, terrible walk through. Um... Yes, this one. Great Departed Soul. There are six parts! Six! Ooh. Uh, yeah, you're right. It does end right after. Okay. We're doing this. We're doing the deduction. Let's go. To begin with, we must ask ourselves what exactly is afoot here in this museum. The answer is revealed by the bundle of banknotes protruding so helpfully from your bag. In my estimation, some 200 pounds. That, that is all my own money. So what does this large sum of money reveal? Ah, not as much as the involuntary glance you cast as would seem, Madam to spells. Yes, the answer lies where your eyes now fall. The significance of the 200 pounds is revealed by that public notice. Waxwork for sale. Your business has hit hard times, it would seem. In short, you sold the infamous killer, the centerpiece of your special exhibit, for a sum of 200 pounds. Oh. Now, let us explore the next curiosity with which we are presented. Who is the portly gentleman stretched out so peacefully on the floor? It would appear the man has suffered a severe shock. The cause of which is clearly known to you. Ah. Unfortunately, madam, keeping secrets does not appear to be your forte. What dealt the man with such a socking blow was, of course, the 200 pounds. Or the knives in her pouch? It would appear that you twisted this gentleman around your little finger most effectively. Are you suggesting? Was there a hand behind her? He rashly agreed to purchase the waxwork for the sum of 200 pounds. Only when he came to hand the money over, did it occur to him what an extraordinary amount of paying, extortionate amount he was paying. But the money was no longer in his hands. And the result? The scene we see before us. He collapsed in shock. Yes, the killer in the special exhibit fetched a killer price. You can only pray that the gentleman's dreams are not plagued with regrets. 
Ah, it changed back to his normal outfit for the photo. Sold for cash. Topic two, waxwork location. The question that arises then is what has become of the waxwork that changed hands? Let us consider that problem for a moment. You, you cannot possibly. What immediately strikes me about this conundrum is the young man standing over there. Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only to observe his neckerchief. Such as is worn by policemen as a secret sign to fellow members of the force that a crime is being perpetrated. Yes, this young man is an undercover policeman, currently investigating this museum. I think the old guy is because he has a yellow band around his arm. But anyways. I know him well, in fact. It's Sergeant Grand Clay. What are you talking about? The man's quite a celebrity. He received triple accolades at last year's police awards. But... Next, we turn our attention to the old man sat before him with a particularly unsightly visage. I've been watching closely and he hasn't moved a muscle. Almost, in fact, as if he were a waxwork. As he has a tag on him? Or is that part of the scarf? Ah, but... but you... Your reaction only confirms my suspicions, madam. I noticed it at once, of course. Observe. The telltale sign is that instantly peruse that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious price tag. Ruppins. A tragically low price, you might say. Though perhaps the going rate for aging waxworks riddled with cracks. And yet you sold it to the portly gentleman for an exorbitant 200 pounds. A sort of plucky behaviour that's sure to attract the attention of Scotland Yard. Isn't that so, madam? I do not... Yes, the waxwork you sold has already been seized by the police and remains in their custody as we speak. The old man must be reunited with his grave in the special exhibit and not a moment too soon. Discovered already. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this horrifying puzzle. <laughs> I see I've stunned you all into silence. Have, Hurley, you have. And you've obviously upset this young lady in the process. Her cauldron looks awfully hot. Um, if I could just bring up one point, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, the notorious Naruto one point. I'm all ears, my dear fellow. According to your deduction, then, the special exhibit featured this old policeman. So, that would mean he's particularly ruthless murderer, wouldn't it? The killer policeman, Otomo. Sorry? This mysterious series of murders that rattled the capital only last year. The police rushed to the scene every time, only to find the culprit had disappeared into the theatre into the ether. And it turned out the culprit was a policeman himself, a senior officer by the name of Otomo. So you mean that's who the sinister looking old man there is supposed to be? Indeed, it is a particularly grim face, is it not? Unforgettable, in fact. Yes, I remember that odious countenance only too well. But is 200 pounds a lot of money for a wax model? It would be enough to afford one of the latest steam carriages if that puts things in perspective. So, so, it is quite a lot, then. Oh no, I skipped it accidentally. Is there anything else you wish to add? Before I melt you down. That bubbling wax is looking more and more ominous. Ugh, the smell of all that molten wax is starting to worry me. Mr. Sholmes did more or less just accuse her to fit her face, so... I think I might have to call on your assistance here, Iris, if that's alright. To make some minor corrections to the great detective's great deductions. Of course it's alright. We'll soon set things straight. Well, let's get started then, shall we? For Madame Tuspel's vent her anger. Just what I was waiting to hear, my dear fellow. So, Madame Tuspel's, in accordance with our agreement, you shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famously great detective and temporary exhibit at work. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. To begin with, we must ask ourselves here in the museum. Answer by the bundle of bags. Some 200 pounds. That's all her money. What does it reveal? 
The involuntary glance is not to the sign, but something around it. She definitely looked in this direction, it's true. I'm not sure she'd sell any of her waxworks, even for 200 pounds. Oh? Just pour her heart and soul into making them, don't you think? Over and above the wax. But with me, I wouldn't sell them for anything. For that much money, I would. But it sounds like that makes me a bad person. Well, anyway. I wonder if 200 pounds could have some other significance. Let's follow that furtive glance again and see if there's anything else that could explain it. This thing. Um, can I examine it? Note on the wall. What's that note doing pinned on the wall there? Oh yes, let's see. Dear Madam Two Spells, we've taken the prisoner from this room. The price for a safe return is 200 pounds. Have the money ready by noon on 23rd October. What? This is... It's just the sort of thing that's left behind when someone is kidnapped. Yes, it's a ransom note. Exactly. Ransom note. Present! <laughs> Are you literally doing anything in this section? Yes, I'm fixing his mistakes. <laughs> the significance of the 200 pounds is revealed by that ransom note. Quite so. And we must congratulate these criminals on their inventiveness objecting a waxwork. Ah! 200 pounds is no small ransom fee, yet you clearly intend to pay it. The model in question has special importance. I put together all the money I have. In summary then, the 200 pounds you have in your handbag is ransom money. Now, let us explore the next curiosity with which we are presented. It was a portly gentleman stretched out so peacefully on the floor. It would appear the man has suffered a severe shock. The cause of which is clearly known to you. Ah. Unfortunately, madam, keeping secrets does not appear to be a forte. What does the man suck to song and blow was the 200 pounds. So if the waxwork was kidnapped, where does that leave us in terms of who this man is? We could just ask him when he comes round. I think the point of this exercise is to understand the beauty of the deduction process, Iris. Yes, you're right. Hurley's trying so hard, we mustn't let him down. Well, there's little doubt he suffered a shock. That much seems clear. But in that case, what's Madame Two Spells trying to hide? Let's have a closer look around. What are you hiding? Oh my gosh, it's a hand! This is just Madame Tuspel's right hand, isn't it? Yes, it must be. I can clearly see her left hand, after all. Oh, but wait a minute. This is a left hand as well. Look! D don't say such creepy things, Iris, please. And it seems very stiff, too. In fact, it's really hard. You, you mean... <laughs> it's made of wax? Wax, word hand. We <laughs> don't... What dealt a man such a shocking blow was, of course, the waxwork hand. Indeed, with a solid waxwork limb, one could deliver a very substantial blow. How... how could you... The hand protruding from the bottom of your cape. It ought to be a right hand, but closer inspection reveals that, in fact, it's a left hand. Ah! And somewhat masculine as well. In other words, it does not belong to you, madam. It's the hand of a waxwork model. Yeah! Ew. Some of the visitors to my museum can be troublesome. They meddle with the exhibits and cause damage. So you mean that arm? Yes, the gentleman saw fit to try to remove it as a souvenir. Ew. Hmm, no small keepsake. Like taking a whole branch of a cherry tree when you go to view the blossoms. I'm afraid I have to teach the man a lesson. confronted the man and tried to take the arm back. And the result? The scene we see before us, he was not unconscious. A point we may re need to revisit later, but for the time being, we have a conclusion. Yes, the killer in this special exhibit has been kidnapped. As you can see, Sir Squeakus here has brought in the DNA evidence. Oh, what if the mouse was real and he really did help in investigations? That would be so cute. The question arises then, what has become the waxwork that changed hands? Let us consider that problem for a moment. You you cannot possibly. 
What immediately strikes me about this conundrum is the young man standing over there. Who is this fellow to find out his neckerchief? According to Mr. Sholmes, the yellow neckerchief is a sign to other policemen that some crime is underway. A way of communicating with his colleagues without revealing his, ident his identity, yes. It's a secret that's closely guarded by Scotland Yard. That Mr. Sholmes didn't hesitate to give away. Well, uncovering secrets is in any true detective's nature, of course. Right, anyway, judging from Madame Tuspel's reaction to Mr. Sholmes' deduction, I think perhaps we might not have identified the man quite correctly. <gasps> His arm! What the? The man has a stub sticking out of his shoulder where his arm should be. Ah, well that settles that then. Right, this isn't a real person at all. The entire arm's been ripped off from the shoulder down. His arm's been... Of course, that ties in with what we just found out. Shoulder stub. <laughs> Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only observe his shoulder stub. No such boneless human walks this earth. Of, of that, I can assure you. In other words, the man standing here, the young Sergeant John Clay, is in fact, defying all odds, a waxwork model. I seem to remember it was you who, clu 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 ah, you who concluded he was a real person in the first place, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> He has become quite a celebrity in London, being the winner of no less than three policing awards last year. I simply had to make a model of the man. Naturally, what other explanation could there be? And it was this detective's arm that was pulled off by the man on the floor in the special exhibit, wasn't it? Next, we turn our attention to the old man sat before him with a particularly unsightly visage. I've been watching closely and he hasn't moved a muscle, almost, in fact, as if he were a waxwork. Ah, but, but you... The reaction only confirms my suspicions, madam. I noticed it at once, of course. Observe. The telltale sign that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious price tag. A killer policeman called Ottermore, was it? Was he well known? It was all over the papers last year, but I can't say I know what he looks like. A very low price, though. Robbins isn't much money. Only enough for a few misly hours of gas in Mr. Garadub's delightful lodgings, in fact. So this is the special killer taken from the special exhibit, is it? The waxwork that somebody stole from the museum and tried to ransom for 200 pounds. Is this crusty old killer policeman Ottermole? Really? Perhaps we should have a good look around and see if another idea crops up. He has to... Chief. His foot is tapping! Look at this! The old man's tapping his foot like crazy! He seemed to be fast asleep though. He's not tapping his foot consciously then, so you mean... It must be a twitch! Never mind that, the point is, waxworks don't tap their feet. Or a twitch! And look at his arm, too. We've seen a scarf like that somewhere else around here, haven't we? I'm gonna present the twitch. The telltale sign that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious twitch. Even the most realistic waxworks do not exhibit a twitch. In other words, this splendid old man is in fact a genuine member of Scotland Yard. Slight shift in your choice of adjectives, then. And there you have it. Well, Madam Two Spells. Well, what? It was me who contacted the police and demanded that someone come in with the first place. Come in the first place. He's clearly fatigued. He is sound asleep. But then, what's this tag about showing a price of three pounds? No doubt the price tag of the muffler, which the old Bobby purchased recently at a local market. And I presume you've observed the scarf tied around his arm? Does that not strike you, Mr. Nadahodo? Yes, the secret sign used by detectives to show that some criminal activity is currently underway. Of course, because as you know, there has been just such criminal activity happening here. As you deduced from the very beginning, detective. So, it would seem that we finally arrive at the truth. The waxwork of the especially ruthless killer from the special exhibit has been kidnapped. And Scotland Yard are already investigating. But the model's whereabouts remain a mystery. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this horrifying puzzle. I think the wax model 
was taken to the Great Exhibit to take part in this crazy teleporting mystery. Also, if this case has six parts, that's six dreams, that's already like two, three weeks. I'm not gonna finish this by June. I may have to play the rest of this game um, off stream and just record separate episodes whenever I have free time on weekends. And then just upload it to YouTube and then just start streaming something else in the meantime. Oh wow. All sorts of people visit my museum here. Men and women, young and old. Sometimes they drop in just for a short time on their way back from the pub. I welcome them all. But if anyone tries to damage my exhibits, I do not take it lightly. Anyway. The Great Deduction was even more enchanting than I had been led to believe. It was a pleasure, my dear madam. I'm gratified that you enjoyed the spectacle. And as for your rough customer, I have no doubt he'll regain consciousness shortly and return home. What concerns me more is the waxwork from the special display, if it was indeed generally abducted. Yes, tragically it was. Then I would ask you to recount the, to us the events surrounding the stolen waxwork. In as much detail as possible, if you please. Very well. But after I have told you what I know, I must insist that you return to your work. The talents of a great detective could be put to better use, I feel, but as you wish. Let's go, it's only been half an hour since you started streaming. <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought it would be over after the deduction! I have to talk! Tell us more about the stolen waxwork, please. It was some days ago now, when I came in here one morning. I immediately noticed that a waxwork was missing from the special exhibit here. It is your most prominent display, so that's why the curtains were closed. But I found the ransom note in its place. The culprit must have broken in during the night and taken it then. With this waxwork that was stolen, it was a model of some horrible criminal, I suppose. Of a particularly horrible criminal, in fact. Killer who left a more profound scar on society than any other, I would say. The Professor. Not a name I've heard of. So, Mr. Nodhuro, it seems the circle is complete. Sorry? The Professor's case happened at around the time I was born, didn't it? Indeed it did, Iris. Ten years ago, a series of murders that rocked the capital. Ten years ago? Yes, at exactly the time. That Barak von Zeeks graduated from university, in fact. It's connected? What? Surely he's not saying... So the big event that changed Mr. Reaper's life? As you surmised, it was the Professor case. Who was this Professor then? Oh my gosh! And it don't stop coming, 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 and it don't stop coming. It was a series of gruesome murders that had all of London crept in terror a decade ago. After five victims were killed, the man was arrested and put to death. And now he's immortalized here in wax for all Londoners to admire and enjoy. Though, of course, he happens to be absent at present on account of the abduction. But I don't understand. How is this all related to Lord Van Zeeks? You must first understand, my dear fellow, why is it that the Professor earned such infamy? It was due to the victims he chose, some of Whitehall's finest. What do you mean, Hurley? Those murdered by the Professor were some of the highest members of British aristocracy. Members of the nobility, even royalty, it sent shockwaves to the country's administration. Members of the... Ah, wait, of course. What Professor Harebrain said, Lord Van Zeeks is from a family with noble blood. Gosh! It was the fifth victim that led to the professor's arrest. The last of the killer's prey was a young noble by the name of... Clint Van Zeeks. No, I don't believe it! Van Zeeks! 
I'm sure you can piece together the rest for yourself. In the wake of his older brother's murder, the young Barak pursued a career as a prosecutor, and eventually became the Reaper we know today. I had no idea Lord Van Zeeks had such a tragic past. Well, I'm afraid that's all I can say on the matter, for the time being at least. After all, I have work to do. As a waxwork exhibit. So we don't get to see what the professor looks like? I'm afraid I shall have to excuse myself as well. Oh, yes, of course. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Kill who? Well, none of the pre predicted scenarios I've been analyzing involved you coming to visit me here. Oh, okay. It's been too long. It really has. I'm delighted to see you, Bark. It's been ten years, and here we are, meeting in a prison of all places. I can't forgive myself for what happened to Mr. Asman. I just can't. I still can't believe it could happen. Tomorrow, the court will decide. Yes. I have a young Eastern man acting as for my defense. Seems reliable enough, though. It was an accident. A terrible accident. He, 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 he assures me he can prove it. I must warn you. Oh, I know, I know. I've heard already. You're going to be the prosecuting, aren't you? Yes. So I've returned to England. I've heard lots of stories. Barak, are you really? What? Never mind. I know that you have my best interests at heart. My friend is on trial. I wouldn't entrust it to anybody else. Of course, I fully understand. Thank you, Barak. Until tomorrow, then. I'll see you in court. Who's the professor? There's a code there for you guys. For what exactly? Who knows? That's a really long code. Okay, I'm I'm exhausted. So if it's six parts, that means there probably is a two-part trial, another investigation, and then another two-part trial. Or it's going to be one part trial, two more investigations, and then two part trial. Ugh, I can't believe it's six parts. Three more hours, let's do a JT. No. Another day, another time. I cannot. I'm so tired. Um, This is it for me now. Oh my gosh. It's been two hours and 48 minutes. I need to stop now. Um, So yeah. Thanks for joining me. It's good to be back. It's good to be streaming again. Um... I need to fix the layout of my thing now because now when I look at my new monitor, I'm looking off screen and it doesn't look like I'm looking at my game thing. So I need to fix the layout of this. Boo. Um, but yeah, I'll try to stream again Thursday, possibly. Um, if I do stream Thursday, I'll try to stream earlier because these look like it's going to be like two and a half, three hour sections. But yeah, uh, I'm tired. I don't know what to say anymore. So. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. Bye-bye.